Redskins for a generation here in Austin, Texas. And moments ago, the Longhorns with fireworks on senior day made their way out onto the field. 13 in total, 11 that will see appreciable playing time. And for the fifth year seniors, they're playing for their third coach. And this guy, Cliff Kingsbury, may be coaching for his future at his alma mater. And in so doing, a change will be made as the transfer, McLean Carter from Gilbert, Texas, a transfer by well, Kilgore Junior College, gets his first start tonight. A lot is on the line as here on Fox in primetime, it's the Red Raiders of Texas Tech taking on the Texas Longhorns. A magnificent night for college football, and yes, the eyes. Texas are on us as we close out our regular season a week away from the Big 12 title game in Jerry World. Alongside Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando, you'll hear from Holly Saunders a bit later. And you know, this is the third time that we've been here, Spencer, mm -hmm. to close out our season. And it's always juicy here in Texas, <laughs> but the storylines right. this time are big, really big. Well, it is the bottom line for Tom Herbin. The net net is this. They are bowl eligible, and with the win tonight, they get a chance to move in a little bit to a winning record, mm -hmm. something they hadn't had around here and since Mac Brown was roaming the sidelines, and that's been almost four full seasons ago. They get the bowl, they're seven and five. That's a good place. But in talking to Tom Herman, he told both you and I the expectations are so high, Tim, that's not good enough. He's got to find a way to get them on the side and off in the right direction. Now, ultimately, Cliff Kingsbury's in a different situation. Yeah. He's got a power outage with that uh, air raid offense of his. He's got to find a way to get them going again. Some people think it's an emergency to the point where it rises to job security. Yeah. I don't know if that's the case, but the fact that he started another quarterback, as you pointed out, a McLean Carter could be part of the solution. We'll see. I still think that Justin Stockton, the running back, is going to have to help him out to be successful. Yeah, with that in mind, now remember, Herman uh, was last year's um, Scott Frost. Yes, he was the yes, hottest was. name in coaching. <laughs> now he's trying to get to seven and five. But for this air raid offense, as you said, they got to find a way to get it ignited. Do you anticipate they run it a little bit more? I think they're going to run it a lot. And I think both backs, if they can get around 125 yards, that's going to be key. Why is that going to be key? We're going to unpack that three-cloud look that's oh, going to yeah. be a bugaboo for anybody running the air raid offense this year. We saw what Iowa State did to TCU and Oklahoma. Believe me, there's going to be some copycatting going on tonight with Texas. It matters a lot to everyone involved here before a couple crowd at Carol K. Royal Memorial Stadium. And a reminder that American Express offers and reminds you that this Saturday is Small Business Saturday. Don't forget to get out and shop small to support the small business that makes your community home. When we come back, Holly Saunders will join us and talk about the Texas quarterback scenario. That and more when we come back to Austin, Texas. Welcome you back. Texas Tech in Texas. We touched on the Red Raiders change at quarterback, but with the latest on the Texas combination, here's Holly Saunders. Yeah, Tim, for Texas, this season has been a quarterback carousel between Sam Ellinger and Shane Bouchelle. Now, Bouchelle has started the last four games, and he's a better pocket passer, but Ellinger is getting the nod to start tonight. And according to Coach Herman, Ellinger just has a presence about him. For example, when he walks in a room, you might not see him, but you know he's there. You can feel him. And while Ellinger is starting tonight, don't be surprised if both quarterbacks have some time, though, to help this Texas team to the first winning season since 2013, Tim. And then this offense, through the course of the year, with all of the alignment changes with their offensive front, which has had a lot to do with the injuries to the quarterbacks, they've just been able to get through this season with two of them going. Now, Texas Tech won the toss. They deferred and will kick off to Texas, which tells you a little something about the air raid, Spencer, that they wouldn't want the ball to open the game. Michael Barton, number 49, will kick it away. And back deep, little Jordan Humphrey. <laughs> is well, in safety along with Kyle Porter, 21. Well, Texas Tech is playing great defense with David Gibbs, their defensive coordinator. That helps make that decision a lot more palpable. This one will go through the end zone for the touchback. And let's get Tillman's takes for tonight's matchup here in Austin. Timmy B, listen, Texas needs to be successful with shots down the field a little bit early. Now, Texas Tech, of course, is a turnover machine. The bulk of them have been interceptions, but you still need to at least have that threat out there that you go to the perimeter. And of course, once again, mentioned David Gibbs a minute ago, the defensive coordinator. They are 4-0 or Texas Tech when they are plus two in the turnover category. Expect them to be fast and furious to try to affect not just the secondary, what's happening in the throw game as well. Daniel Young 
The youngster out of Houston, Texas, is in the backfield with Ellinger on first down from the 25. And they go reverse right away. And throwing it out for Ellinger. He's there. He's got it. It's a first down into Texas Tech territory. Hello. How do you do? 27 yards on the opening play. Well, he was doing this at the University of Houston. You see the threat. He's coming the opposite direction. Again, Vontae Dorsey, number 15, was the one who was in the trail technique. But again, the big quarterback who Coach says reminds him of Tim Tebow was on the other end. Nice toss by Lil Jordan Humphrey on that reverse action. Wide receiver screen goes to Colin Johnson, and who was targeted for a couple of touchdown catches in this game in Lubbock a year ago. Well, Tim, you can see, once you get the ball settled in, he raises up those long lean arms, and then number 11, Ellinger, the quarterback. Again, he can do it all. The guy can run the ball. He's accurate enough to be effective, as Holly talked about. Again, they've got two options there, but this is the guy of the pulse of this offense. Gain of five. Second down five coming up here. Warren is in the slot to the right. Young on the plate fake. Ellinger over the middle. Of the puck. That's Kendall Moore, the tight end. It's another first down. 17 yards. Got that ball over the top of Derek Willies. He was back there defending. And again, that's a nice touch pass running away the opposite direction. And he was able, Ellinger, just to take enough off of it, but get enough on it to get over the top of that second level and over Willie's head. First and 10, ball at the 28. Young remains the setback in motion to the top of your screen. That's a quick slant right over the middle. That's Armani Foreman. Look at him go. Wow. Touchdown, Texas. What a physical run. Again, we've been talking about how Texas needed to find the run game, but it's the throw game underneath is what gets it done. You talk about finishing. This is one of the things that plagued David Gibbs' defenses in the previous year. They're supposed to be better at tackling right now. Not on that play, Timmy. Kicking game has been a bit of an adventure for both of these squads. Joshua Rowland will get the nod for this PAT, and it didn't take long. So Texas Tech's defense has improved, but this is one of those 11 seniors we were talking about. Armani, ooh, dressed up like in one of those suits for touchdowns. Seven to nothing, Texas, and an amazing drive where Sam Ellinger, the freshman, accounted for every yard of the drive. Three out of three, that's in the air, plus the reception for 27 yards means that he accounted for every single yard in that opening drive to give the Horns the lead. There was no question he's a playmaker, Tim. When he ended on the third series last week against West Virginia, he ended up 12 of 19 for 136 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, he had the interception there, but there's no question that the offense moves much better when he's under center. Again, they've got two options. Bouchelle's the better thrower, but this guy right here is the pulse. Joshua Rowland will kick it away. Kiki Cutie, who does have quite a bit of speed, is back deep for the Red Raiders. He'll take it two yards deep. And Cutie out to the 22-yard line. We've got a flag on the field, and we'll have to check the marker. Our referee tonight is Mike D. Always well-sculpted and prepared for action. He's bulked up. And yes, he needs, indeed. He needs vitamins. <laughs> uh. Too much of that trip to Fran yesterday. <laughs> yes, indeed. During the return, holding, return team number 41. Ten-yard penalty being forced from the end of the run, first and ten. Well, that'll set them back, so poor field position to open. Let's get Tillman's takes when the Red Raiders have the ball. Timmy, real quick is going to be about explosive plays in the run game. We see Texas generated them in their throw game, but Texas Tech has got to get it on the ground. That's the only way they're going to be able to pull them out of that three Kyle with those pressed up corners, and then ultimately, Texas will count it. Justin Stockton in the backfield. 649 yards on the ground for him, and there's Cutie on the quick skin to about the 16-yard line gain of four. As you look at McLean Carter, this youngster can run the football as a senior in high school, was 29 and one overall, but 16 and 0 in his final season at Gilmer. In East Texas, uh, by the way, a teammate of Chris Boyd's 
Number two for Texas, a corner. They were on the same team together. Heck of a series to make your first start, though, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. And Kander Out of bounds for Dylan Cantrell. No, and Tim. He's got it, and that's ahead. They're going to say it was incomplete. He was out of bounds, as I previously thought. So it is third down and three. Let's see if Texas takes away the quick game. And that's with the soft coverage. They're not playing that press right now. No. We'll see how long they stay in it. Trips to the top of your screen. They did rule it a catch, but he only made it to that location at the 19. They're three yards away. And that's a first down. To the wide side of the field, T.J. Vasher out of Wichita Falls, Texas. And he's got a first down. Timmy, T.J. Vasher was one of the two receivers that they moved take advantage of their length. That was the key in the difference. You can see the isolation and the move there. Outstanding job of him getting open, beating that soft coverage on the outside. Let's see if Texas, still playing soft up top, makes a response. At the 32-yard line, first down. Pressure, and they go screen. That's Stockton. Hauled down from behind. Quality work by Gary. Johnson, he's got great speed starting at that rover spot. So good is he athletically, they move Malik Jefferson into the inside linebacker position. As long as they're moving the ball, they're going to go pace and tempo, use it as a tactical advantage. Second and six. Nice job. How about this change of direction? Batson, hold down from behind. That's the speed I was talking about in Gary Johnson. Youngster from Dodge City Community College. This kid was a 10-6-40 guy starting at that rover position 33. And they moved him, Malik Jefferson, out and inside because of that speed that you talked about. I'm telling you, that running back, wide receiver, kind of takedown speed there. And the finish on the back end of it. Look at the build on this guy. He's pure athlete, speed, and ferocious to the finish. Texas fourth best in the country in getting off the field on third down. Texas Tech faces third and 10. They go empty. Pressure again off the edge. And the left-hander loops it, tipped into the air. Almost caught a second time by J.D. on high, number 88. Senior from Hereford, Texas, and it falls incomplete. A punt formation coming up. Boy, I was impressed by this throw from McLean Carter, though. Well, he found the soft spot in the void, and he almost split the difference, which is what you're trying to do. Get as further away from the defender as you possibly can. And he looked like Mahomes there, yeah, floating the opposite direction to put some touch on that ball. You know what? Jefferson got a hand on that, Spence. He actually tipped it ever so slightly to change the direction of that ball. On the punt, it's Reggie Hempel maps that's back deep, calls for a fair catch at the 24-yard line. Nice job by Panazolo with a 44-yard boot for the Red Raiders. Horns have the ball and the lead here in Austin on the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Fox College Football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you, and by the Lincoln Wishlist sales event. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Holly Saunders. And you see McLean Carter, who... Coming off his first series, talking to some of his receiving core. Texas back to work again at their 25. Young is in the backfield, and he'll tote it. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and then perhaps a yard. That's all for Daniel Young. Stopped by Mike Lynn Thomas, or Big Mike, as they call him. Really improved. This is a much stronger team up the middle than uh, David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, had a season ago. Mike Lynn Thomas playing a zero technique. That means he's just over the nose tackle, over the center by himself, controlling two holes. Out of the shotgun, it's Young again. Nice, he's big. Boy. He plugs a lot of the holes, oh, doesn't he's he? He's tough, man. A little bit of help from Dakota Allen, 40. That's probably been the biggest difference in this Texas Tech defense is getting Dakota Allen, who had some difficulties off the field, back after spending some time away from the program for charges that were later dropped and re-entering after some time at East Mississippi Community College. He and Jordan Brooks, number one, are the guys that make most of the tackles for this Texas Tech defense. This is kind of almost like last chance you for him. Third down and seven for Texas. Quick drop, Ellinger slings it incomplete. Out of the 35-yard line for Gerard Hurd, the former quarterback. Octavius Morgan, number five. Junior transfer from Butler Community College. 
out of Greenwood, South Carolina, was in coverage. That's a major win there for David Gibbs in his stop unit. Again, they have been getting off the field, third down, preserving opportunities for Texas Tech Red Raider offense. But again, they've got to convert on the opposite side to keep this thing close. Michael Dixon will boot it away. Kiki Cutie and Cameron Batson are back deep. High booming punt. They've got an outstanding kicker in Dixon and a fair catch called at the 12 <laughs> by Batson. That is a 60-yard boot. You wonder why that guy's a Ray Guy finalist? You can tell right there. Both these teams have had issues with their kick game, but that one right there will prevent you from getting the apple in a road map real quick. Man, that's a big-time foot there. game was one we had a couple of years ago. There's an example of just how much lift he gets, Spencer. I mean, it's just like your, your nine iron. Is this the <laughs> pitching wedge? That got underneath that thing and it just took off, man. The amazing thing is um, how how much he gets lift and that's Ray Guy uh, from back in the day with the Raiders into the Hall of Fame. That tremendous lift. Of course, he played his college ball at Southern Mississippi. Stockton is in the backfield. Oh, we got a double motion here. That's and uh, Stockton get back up. We've got a marker down as he goes down at the 15-yard line. Jim, you talk about Cliff pulling out all the stops. That was a twins motion. Guys in the trail technique coming the opposite direction. I'm surprised that he get called for that one, but very of, inventive. Yeah, a lot of pre-snap <laughs> movement, and Mike Defee's going to talk to us about it right here. What again? Illegal shift yep. on the offense. Two men moving without resetting. <laughs> Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Just a little Canadian football for you <laughs> for the holiday season. But the trail technique, you can't do that. You know, those, that looks good. I mean, it looks Canada. I was looking for the <laughs> Ottawa Rough Riders yeah. in Saskatchewan yeah. or somebody, man. <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> never won in Austin until two years ago, and he had a Ruski play to help put that one away with Jakeem Grant, you might recall, who's now playing in the big leagues. He only had one win as a player, and that was in Lubbock. That pass over the middle for Dante Thompson, and it falls incomplete. That ball was just a little bit too high for Dante, and again, that's what you're missing, quarterback position. You particularly backed up. You've got to be efficient. Texas has not really shown them those rolled-up corners that's indicative of that three-cloud look that's been giving everybody fits that runs this air raid. But when they do, they're going to have to find a way to run against that and throw at some point in time. Well, they're up against the sticks now with the penalty and now the incompletion at second and 15. Dual back, Stockton and Trey King. Play fake, and they go wide to Cutie. And Cutie is ahead to the 15-yard line, so they get back some of the yardage that was lost on the penalty. That's what you do and achieve in the quick game. You get them out there in space, a two-on-three matchup, and again, you can look at the, the Texas Tech offense and the Texas defense, how they rank. This should be a great matchup for these two. Irresistible force against what has been a third down and a movable object. Todd Orlando's defense. Texas still playing with those soft corners. Confidence in their defense. With pressure off the edge now. They got to get in a better play here. Wow. Blitz off the corner. Nice presence in the pocket. Look at the left-hander go. He's very close to the first down. Maybe a yard shy. Ominahu, 90, making the tackle. But he faced a lot of pressure coming off the edge that time and was able to step up into the pocket. What McLean recognized, Tim, was the blitzer coming off the edge. And then because the back stayed in, there was no responsibility. So he's free to protect. Tremendous job, number one, of pulling it down. He looks like Mahomes there, man. Yep. Got to protect that ball. Pull it in there, though. Can't be holding it like that, but he has the presence of mind to pull it in and stretch to get the additional yards. But the eyes downfield and then the ability to cut back, that's that athleticism that Cleansbury thinks is going to help them get a win here. Come Roach, 32. The defensive end was also coming in off the edge. It looked shy, and it is by about the length of the football. And he won't mess with it here, obviously. It's fourth down. And yet again, that Texas defense finds a way to get off the field on third down. And, Timmy, we're going to be tracking an important statistic that we used to take for granted. But since this air raid offense has begun kind of idle, the points per possession are becoming more and more important for them. And as this game moves on, if they're not scoring, they're going to be in a deep hole. It's 
totally out of line with what they want to operate. They opened against Texas, or rather Oklahoma, with the 22-play drive. That's not what they want to do. They want to get explosive plays. Panazolo boots away. Young man out of Australia gets a nice boot off and a fair catch called at the 26 by Hemp Hill Maps. 53 yards for him. 7-0 Texas early on. Back to back for the first time ever here in Austin. And Shane Bouchelle is coming in quarterback. That pass is off the edge. Colin Johnson takes it in. Youngster out of San Jose, California. Bouchelle known as a more prolific pocket passer. Like Ellington has had plenty of opportunities. Set records as a true freshman in his opening game. Everyone recalls that matchup with Notre Dame a year ago. Almost two years ago now. Coneal Carter is in the backfield. And that is Hurd running the sweep. Little jet sweep marker down as he goes down at the 45-yard line. Tech may have been off size on that one. Got a little bit anxious. Needs to hold your water. Speaking of your quarterback, his problem, he's had ankle and shoulder injuries throughout the season. He's been in and out of the lineup. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. And getting that jet sweep going for Hurd coming from that Slot position. They had some pre-snap movement there. Tom Herman in his first year has had seven jobs in his career, six of them in the state of Texas. Of course, he spent some time with Urban at Ohio State, the difference maker really from an offensive standpoint in 2015. A little shallow cross here for her. Nice. Stopped at the 27, you're right. Dakota Allen with the open field tackle that linebacker that we touched on JC transfer out of humble Texas who's been humbled somewhat and come back and played at a higher level great open field tackle again he's playing at that will a weak side linebacker usually he doesn't have a body over the top of him so he's kind of free to kind of do what he wants to do is similar to that Viper position that we've seen in Michigan's defense they allow him to go wherever he needs to go to make a play well, that Viper position will be on display for Joel and Gus at Michigan Stadium Tomorrow on Fox, Kyle Porter is in the backfield now on third and nine for Texas. Bouchelle stepping up in the pocket. He's no statue back there. He can get around, but he's dumped at the 25. So it'll go down statistically as a sack by Allen. A uh, loss of a yard on the play. If you see him at number 40 around the ball a lot, that's the reason why he's free to do that. You can see just a four-man rush up front. Nice job of stepping and eluding that initial wave of pressure. Tried to make a little move, but number 40 is as athletic as Bouchelle is, and he made a great open field tackle there to force a punt. Well, some pre-snap movement there. Perhaps a false start, maybe offsides. Batson back all the way to his 11, but he's got a little room to work with. This could be a free play for him. Let's see if Ellie ushers himself out. At about the 17, maybe 18-yard line, but we'll check the marker. 64-yard boot which has become uh, the rule rather than the exception for Michael Dixon. Offside. Defense in the neutral zone with the snap. Penalties decline. First down. That would not have been enough for the first down, so they declined it after a great boot. Well, it's great to have the Big 12 back on to championship Saturday after a seven-year absence. The Big 12, the only conference which guarantees to have its two best teams playing each year, and tickets do remain available. But my guess is now that we know who the combatants will be, <laughs> they'll be going fast for Jerry World. TCU earned their way in by virtue of a hard-fought win today against Matt Rule's Baylor team. How about congratulations Gary? to Gary Patterson. He'll get a rematch from that 18-point loss he had against Oklahoma within the month. And his 11th, 10th win season. That's strong. Awesome. That is Cutie. Boy, he is some quick. And he, he can ignite it, stop and start in a heart. That's 12 yards. Malik Jefferson dragging him down. Texas showed some issues trying to get set against this team. Still trying to sort it out right now, working with those ends, trying to identify where the strength is so they can get to the correct side. King remains the setback. Dylan Cantrell and J.D. on high are flanked to the bottom of your screen. First down. Charles O'Menahue, number 90, that right end is in a situation where they come his way. They're coming there. King. 
Up to the 35 yard line, Antoine Davis, number seven, the senior from Bastrop, Texas, making the tackle. It's really interesting. You, you unpack this tech team where they want to run is exactly against this three man front. Quick look in, grab, great hands by QT inside the 45. And corralled hard by Chris Boyd. That's the young man that we mentioned played in high school with McLean Carter at Gilmer. Timmy, we talked about the soft spots in this defense. The windows are tight, but they're running fast, but they're going to be right over the back of the linebackers. And seven out of nine nice now. The lefty. Look at that. Jimmy, he's got it down to the three. Deshaun Elliott saves the touchdown for Texas. Eric Morris, the offensive coordinator, talks about those tight windows. When you get in there, he's going through his progression, finds him on the other end, and finishes. Moving fast. Just got the chain set. It's King. Pushed back at the two. He's your boy in 33. Yep, Gary Johnson. He's not only fast, he's stout. You know, sometimes these, these guys that are really, really fast look like they're hitting harder, but it's, it's physics, man. When you're running fast, you don't have to be the biggest guy in the world. Speed, mass, equals force. Texas Tech going heavy now. King the setback. Now they're in the trips formation. Texas having a tough time sorting it out. Watch the inside receiver. They're coming to him right now. Off the edge. And they're going to rule that touchdown to Antoine Wesley. 22 just into the game, and they go wide receiver screen. You're right. They had him stretched up, and they didn't know where to go. Timmy, this formation is like stealing. It's really about getting people in space, but you've got to be lined up on the defensive side of the ball, ready to risk recognize it. It's a three-step process. Disearn the coverage, find out what your assignment is, and then execute it. Looks like the knee may be down, so they may take a look, as they yeah. always do, on these scoring plays. Yeah, but where is the ball when the knee is down? And that angle will not be <laughs> definitive. They'll have to see it from another angle. That would be Wesley's first touchdown reception if it holds up. Just a sophomore. That's Carter's third touchdown, Ariel, if it holds up. It's really good to see these young players stepping up for their coach again. Cliff has been like ice all week long. He's not showing any pressure, but this is effort. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. That plays under further review. See, the problem is yeah, where the ball is. In, touch the pylon, it's touchdown. Dean Blandino is back in our studios. And, you know, unless we see a better angle, Dean, I don't know how you can say there's anything irrefutable about what we've seen, at least to this point. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. I think we're going to have to piece a couple of angles together. It's the right knee that touches first. And then if we go to the live shot, it looks like when the ball breaks the plane, it's touching the pylon. So if they can piece those two angles together, there may be enough to overturn the call on the field. I do agree it is close. And when it doesn't jump out, it's not obvious. They tend to stay with the call on the field. Don Caprell is our replay booth official. We do have Walt Anderson at the rock. That's what they call it. There you see the Here's cart the camera. This, this is a good look, too. Mm, that's a problem, good hey, you look short the to me. The problem is the headlines is obstructing the view of where the end zone area would be. Do you know he looks short to me on this on that angle? He he did look short. Unfortunately, the headlines was yeah. in great position and blocked our view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's After right. For the review, the runner's right knee was down. Thank you. And the ball was at the one foot line. <laughs> In the third down, yeah, I, again, <laughs> at the one foot line, you know, what represents here is football, I have no idea. I mean, I just don't. The headlinesman clearly blocked the one angle that we could see. I don't disagree with you in theory, but irrefutable would mean not to assume, and that's an assumption in my view. Well, here's the thing. If, D, if Dino and I tell you there's cheese on the moon, bring some crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, being uh, in Sugar Land... <laughs> far from Houston. Houston, we don't have a problem. <laughs> Dean and Spencer have us taken care of. All right, so here we go. Third and goal from a, a foot away. And Antoine Wesley's one touchdown catch is negated. King and Stockton, the two setbacks. Out of the shotgun. Nice. Play fake, touchdown. Well done by Carter. 
That one will count. It's irrefutable. Video evidence. Two plays are the foundation of this this offense inside zone and then the quarterback power this is what you're seeing here there is a mesh point but the numbers go in your favor once the ball comes out of his belly and the quarterback can walk that one in if you're reading your keys as a linebacker you're just taking all of that in you're following as did number 33 our boy did he did he got his nose in there Gary Johnson and read it unfortunately the ball was in Carter's hands going the opposite direction that's the first rushing touchdown for McLean Carter and then for the extra point, and this too has been an adventure, is Hatfield. Splits the uprights nicely, and we're tied at seven. Texas Tech comes right back at you. Beautiful play call. Morris, the OC, and the Air Raids King, Cliff Kingsbury. Happy to be tied. Fox College Football is sponsored by Coors Light. The key to a good offense is a refreshing defense. Climb on. And by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. McLean Carter out to an outstanding start. That drive, 4475 yards, and gets his first rushing touchdown of his career for Cliff Kingsbury. He a great pedigree, over 4,000 yards in high school his senior season, state title as well. And I'll tell you what, I, I've always felt Cliff had an eye for quarterbacks, and the bottom line is this if you can play at that next level, even if you're young, you can see the wave that's happening across the country. Young guys are contributing early. That's why it's hard for me to believe that his job would be on the line by virtue of a win or a loss tonight. It really is. He's uh, so very popular down in Lubbock. Little Jordan Mer Humphrey takes that one for a back. And tomorrow, a reminder, it's the biggest of rivalries. Number nine, Ohio State against Michigan at the Big House. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern only on Fox. Stream it live on Fox Sports Go. That Don Brown defense of Blitzkrieg, <laughs> they're not as calm, that defense, as Bevo. No. I can tell you that. They move around a little bit more than Bevo does. Bevo's cool. He was bred to kind of endure those long yeah. winters. That's, <laughs> that's what the Longhorn was bred for. He is cool, no doubt about that. Sam Ellinger is back in at quarterback. Shane Bouchelle got a series, and now Ellinger back in there. His sixth start of the year. Identifying the safety in the Mike Backer. Young the setback, the play fake win. Ellinger looking, he can throw the post. Looking long and overshoot the intended receiver, Gerard Hurd. The offensive line did a nice job that time protecting him. But look at that. The different line combination that they've had. They just got Connor Williams back, and they had to make the move at guard. Terrell Cooney, 51, in for this particular game as the starter. But it's just been a mash unit throughout the course of the year for Herman. Quick curl, and it's taken by Colin Johnson. And the sophomore from San Jose brings it in right in front of Demarcus Fields. That's a gain of nine, third and one. Collins brought the load that time, and Fields just took a punch from him, man. Got upfield and got an extra yard or two after that. Talking about yards after contact. Fields felt that one big time. Ellinger well, taking it all the way, and he stopped short. Jordan Brooks, number one. This is a youngster, the sophomore from Houston, out of Stratford High, who's been making a difference with this defense. A lot of great athletes come out of Stratford High, and again, that's a nice form tackle right there to deny the first down. And this guy right here is, is big, about 225, 230, and he's not easy to bring down. That's just great athleticism. Brooks stopping him short. Those two outside linebackers have been as advertised, Dakota Allen and Jordan Brooks, for David Gibbs' defense who, by the way, came to Tech from Houston and had an opportunity. Oh, this guy's got a foot. Does he ever? Fair catch is called for by Cameron Batson again at the 12. David Gibbs almost worked for Tom Herman, almost yep. stayed to work with him. Tom said, he's trying to, Tom said he tried to keep him. Yep. 54 yards on that boot. Take a look at the season that this has been at West Virginia. They just could not outscore him. Shimanek had his problem. Iowa State, who really started the drop eight, rush three, three cloud defense. 
They struggled with Kansas State as well. Did get that victory at Baylor, but TCU throttled them. Everybody in this league, including Texas, has played the copycat on the three-cloud defense. And I know, Spencer, that's something that you want to explain a bit further on how it's been the elixir to stop the spread offense and the air raid in general it in really the Big 12. It really has, but Texas has not played a lot of it to this point. Stockton's in the backfield, looping it long down the sidelines for Cantrell, incomplete. Dillon actually became a defender that time as McLean Carter's old teammate Chris Boyd had eyes on an interception there. Chris Boyd played it well, and part of the reason he was able to play it, he had a big cushion off the top. Now, if he were playing in press coverage, you'd be able to beat that over the top. The fade ball is something that Cliffs Klingsbury said that they're going to try to throw and make a habit of it if they come at press. They tried at that time against soft coverage and almost got it picked. Second and ten. Johnson comes off the corner, and he airmails it. He felt it. He felt the footsteps of number 33, did McLean Carter. T.J. Vasher, the intended receiver, he airmailed it. It'll be third and ten. Yeah, he did feel pressure off that right side coming right at him. And again, it's our old friend, number 33. Johnson does a nice job. Gary is flying. Got his ears pinned back, bringing pressure on that outside. But he handled it for the most part well, but that ball was off the mark there. Well, uh, you see a 28% conversion rate versus the fourth best in FBS on third down. This is where you run the ball and get out of there, man. He lets it fly, and it's caught. That's Texas Tech vintage offense. QT comes down with it. And that's a big league throw. It was a big league throw, mainly because Antoine Davis, number seven, the nickel guy, he comes in and he floated this ball, does Carter right over the top of his head. That is tough. In front of coverage, over the underneath coverage, does a nice job of giving Kute a chance to get extra yards. Excellent execution. Beauty has been a factor offensively, no doubt about it. Play fake again. Nice. Looking for an open receiver, slightly underthrown, but caught. It's Basher, and TJ is down at the 20. That was underthrown just enough for him to make the play here, Basher. Well, they moved Basher over from his prior position to the Z position. That's opposite of Willie's number 11 on the opposite side to work the edges. They found him in the middle of the field. They've got something here. 51 yards. And here's McLean Carter. Taking it 15, let's down to the 15-yard line. Let's go back to that pass here. The reason why they move Vasher and company outside is because he's almost 6'6", Timmy. Look how he's built. He's long. He can go up and contest balls. A 50-50 to ball with him is more like a 70-30 ball in his favor. The guy's got tremendous range, length, 6'6". Even if the ball is 50-50, he's going to come down with it most of the time. I'd say the kid uh, getting his first start of the season, McLean Carter, has been under Friday night just enough, don't you think? No 11 question. of 15, 175 for him. Here in the early going. Beautiful fake, a very well-designed run, but well defended. The gap closed quickly. Texas defensively, Malcolm Roach getting help from Jason Hall, number 31. Love the creativity that we're seeing, though. The motion allows the fullback to come back and be the lead blocker. Cliff Kingsbury doing a tremendous job of pushing the limits of creativity. Both of these teams have some home run hitters. And when we come back to open the second, that's the end of third and four. That's the end of one. We're all tied. Fox College football will return after these messages. An old Southwest Conference get together for dessert to your Thanksgiving holiday feast. Enjoy. Aerial coverage is being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. So marvelous, yeah, the capital of the great state of Texas. We both brought our families here. We have for the last three years. What a marvelous town to spend your Thanksgiving holiday in. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Holly Saunders, third and four. Justin Stockton is in the backfield. McLean Carter has put on a show in the last two series. Smooth southpaw. Pressure coming, goes fade for the corner. Cantrell, the intended receiver. It falls incomplete with Antoine Davis 
in coverage. That fade ball to the field is going to be in vogue as long as they get pressure down here. It's exactly what you're looking for. His eyes are locked and dialed in on it. Nice soft touch there. That ball is up just a little bit too long beyond the reach of his receiver. But boy, if he can choke that back a little bit, he's got a chance. All right. Clayton Hatfield will get the opportunity. Two for five. This has been an adventure. His longest is 39. This is going to be, you see where it ranks. It's just been bad. Eight out of 18 overall. Two for his last five. This is from 31. Oh, it's curving. He, got it. he just got it through the left upright. <laughs> the coach is celebrating almost wildly for him. <laughs> well, you're looking for a dog leg left off the tee. This one will hold up. But he got his leg through it. That's the main thing. Those laces turned in the right direction. Both of these coaches were telling us there's a good chance we'll be going on fourth down many, many times <laughs> through the course of this night. So that's a good one for Cliff Kingsbury, and he's encouraging the young man. That would be a win. <laughs> but it has just been, uh, you know, you play as many close games as these teams do, and in this league it's about scoring per attempt. That's right. Every drive, what, what can you get? If you miss opportunities, you're going to lose a lot of games. They, was, they went through stretches where they were as low as 49% in the red area, which is absolutely putrid for this offense. you got to be able to score and punch it in down there, and preferably touchdowns and not field goals. Little Jordan Humphrey is back deep, as you see Michael Barden, the junior from Westlake High, from here in Austin, Texas, kicking it away. This one will come from the goal line, and it's Humphrey. Little Jordan out to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Quality field position. So Texas will have it, and this has been one of the sadder stories, really, in college football, that a program as proud of Texas would go through three different coaches, and in that time, at or near 500, that's one of the reasons Tom Herman was brought in after the job that he did at Houston as head coach. Great pedigree, and even he, I got the feeling from talking with him, Spencer, and he was very candid. I think maybe he even didn't know how hard it was going to be with this group. No this question. Season. He said that, in fact, that the expectations are really, really, really high here. Ellinger in the backfield. And sweet. Got sweet with Hurd, and he stopped at the 35. And with more on what he's been through, here's Holly. Yeah, Tim, just to pile into that, Coach Herman really used to change this culture at Texas by creating relationships with his players. And this really showed yesterday during our meetings. If you remember, he received a text message from JT Barrett, who he coached at Ohio State. And JT was just thanking him for not only being a great coach, but a friend and role model. And as Coach Walker out of the room he gave a fist pump and you could just tell he was extremely proud of the impact that he made similar to how i feel tim i to see a text from you oh, wow. <laughs> how about that on second and 12 the pass falls incomplete off the pressure from jordan brooks oh uh, holly i'm gonna need plenty of room now timmy you're gonna blow his head up now <laughs> Well, the pressure was coming, Tim, and again, he couldn't get out of there well enough from it. Again, the pressure was functional. It was right on his back shoulder. He could remove himself from it immediately. That was a great defensive effort to bring him down. You know, one of the things I, I we asked him because he's worked for so many different people, actually coached at Sam Houston State down in Huntsville at one time. I asked him of all the coaches he's been with, who had the greatest influence? He didn't win. He yeah. said David Bailiff when he was down at Rice with him. Yeah, it was more about how he talked about players and treated coaches. Yeah what he learned from him. He wants it to be fun. He wants his staff to come in looking forward to work. And that's not always the case in some programs. That's Reggie Hemphill maps on the receiving end. And this, he stopped at the 44-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and three in a punt formation coming up. They're going to have to punt it away. But again, I think this program is in good hands. You look at Coach Herman. When he was at Houston, I got a chance to spend some time with him. He was the ultimate in relating to the millennial cohort. He did all kind of fun things. He would relate to him by putting grills in mouth and he'd do some fun stuff to let the kids that know that he was on his level but he did not mince words when he expected more from them they better had given to him well he's taking his time as Dixon wow goes with that sort of soccer style approach and boy did he get it high look at that boot markers down by the way as the ball rests at the two yard line and we'll have to check the flag but that's yet another very effective 53 yard boot by Dixon what a difference maker he is might have to do it again, though. We'll check the flag. Mike DeFee, our referee, getting the word from the side judge. 
during the kick, holding, return team number 23. The penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. First and 10, timeout. That'll be about a yard and two tenths penalty after the hold. There's the hold at the bottom. Timeout. Texas Tech will have it on the doorstep of their own end zone when we come back. But they lead it by three. If you're going to play in Texas. You see the ball resting between the one and the two for Texas Tech. And when you run this kind of offense and you're taking snaps out of the gun and in the end zone, it's always dangerous. Trey King is in the backfield, number 24. It's first down for the youngster McLean Carter, who's acquitted himself quite nicely early on. Play fake. Boy, look at the daring aspect of this play wow. call. Incomplete, almost picked off. Tipped away by Deshaun and Elliott. This kid, because he's left-handed, Spencer, and because he can maneuver, I'm going to throw out an old name at you, all right? <laughs> Kenny Snake Stabler. Well, he's elusive, and yep. you're right, that softball delivery. And he takes chances like old Snake does, too. That yep. was between coverage. Guy under, underneath, undercut it, but he just got it over the top. But he got to be careful about that one. That should tell you how much confidence Kingsbury has in him. They go empty now on second and ten. Airmail that one. Intended for Cantrell. That's a tough throw, Timmy, across the field. That's big league kinds of throws right there. And I don't think it's the most effective call down here. That's an NFL caliber throw across the field with a guy that's getting his first start. Again, against even though it's soft coverage away from him, that's just a very risky throw. Yeah, Cliff did say about the youngster, he's on time. Which means he's got confidence that he can get rid of the ball quickly enough. I, I prefer this in, near to the boundary. Can still get an open play with soft coverage here. You can bust one up and third down and ten. You got the quick route right now up top. I'm okay with the slant there. I'm okay with this or the switch route down. You go wide again, and it's tipped away again by Chris Boyd, his old high school teammate. Boy, it was right there too. Cantrell was in position. But it was knocked away. They're just booking on the fact and hoping that the safety can't get over there in time enough to make a play on the ball. But if you're trying to go over the top of the corner, you've got to be able to make that play. Again, that's a tough act to follow. Bonnie's back there covering defending and got a hand on that play. That's a risky play. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to take advantage of a single safety who has to cover one third of the field either direction. And it's a lot of water to cover. Panazolo will boot it away end over end towards Hip Hill Mats. And he's got it with room to run. And he jitterbugs to the 40. Outstanding field position. 45-yard boot. An 8-yard return. My old teammate tried to get it past me. And I said, uh-uh. Take that stuff back to Gilmer. Texas has it when we return. Lorenzo Joe as we in action they started abruptly after we took the commercial break he picked up six on the play on the pass from Ellinger and now they go with a quick out taken down by little Jordan Humphrey number 84 stopped at the 34 yard line still shy of the first down after a pickup of one third and three coming up see what the horns can do with this quality field position the best that they've had in any drive. It was an interesting play. Just Sean Johnson, number seven, the right safety came all the way across the field to make that play. Young is the setback. Colin Johnson down to the bottom of your screen. And this is a run all the way for Ellinger. A stretch play with your quarterback. And he's got the first down inside the 30. Pushed out by Vontae Dorsey, number 15. Yeah, you run the stretch play with a back typical. He's big enough and fast enough to get to the edge. That's the first third down. From the 28th, they go quickly. Kendall Moore, the tight end, is in a slot left on first down. Nice. Over the middle, incomplete. Humphrey just dropped it. I mean, he was wide open. That should have been maybe even six. Certainly a first and goal. 
Uh, that was just an awful drop because he had him shallow crossing route. His eyes were set, but again, the ball was placed a little high, but still able to go up and catch that one. Should have. Yeah, you got to make that play. Mm. He had a lot of room, plenty of cushion. And Sam knew it. <laughs> Second down and 10. Daniel Young has come back in. Boy, Tom Herman loves number 32, the freshman from Houston. Heard in motion. Here goes Young. Well, the Texas Tech is not yielding nearly as much as they used to in their forward wall. That's just outstanding work by Nick McCann, 98. Love to watch Mike Lynn Thomas, 99 also. Those guys have been playing big. And watching tape, though, I really like Young and, and, and Tennille Carter, the extra back there, number 30. Those two as a tandem, I believe, have enough to help this offense get on track. Impel Max has checked in. He's up at the top of your screen. And six. He's in motion. Nice Ellinger, screen. boy, that flushed it didn't he? right into the hands of Young, and he's going to get it just shy of the 10 at the 12. Jordan some Brooks, the stop. Some of those names you just mentioned, when these guys are pressuring here, the best way to beat it is with underneath pressure. Again, slip them out. Let that speed and quickness work against them. And get Daniel Young underneath it with a little screen play. That's outstanding anticipation and call. The burnt orange is into the red zone at the 12. Ooh. Young, nothing doing. Stopped again by Dakota Allen, number 40. He has just been outstanding. Summerhill High School got back into this program at Texas Tech after his problems off the field by way of East Mississippi Community College. Seven tackles, four solo, and a forced fumble in that game with TCU. See this current drive. They started this, obviously. Great position just outside the 40. Kyle Porter in the backfield now on second down and nine. Oh, a little reverse action to hit play maps. And he stopped at the two. Close to a first down. You can get a first down without benefit of a touchdown. Deshaun Johnson, number seven, made the stop. Deshaun had to put on the chest, though. It was a great play coming back the opposite direction. And you can see Allen and company tries to make a valiant effort. But, but for that last ditch effort right there, that's in for a score. That's a nice game tackling to finish it, but not before they got on the doorstep. We've actually seen more reverses on this Texas offense than we have Texas Tech. Yeah, and it's usually coming off some type of counteraction or some reverse action. That's the way you beat speed. Third and one. Porter. Oh, he's stung. He didn't get there. Are they going to mark his forward progress inside the two? I think he got a good right foot mark, and they'll give him the first down. That's four more downs. Yeah, so they should be in good shape here. Joshon Johnson, the right safety, eventually got back in there from this backside here to pull him back. But again, the forward Boy, progress was there. I don't know, I don't Timmy. Know. I don't know if he got that. They sure need to take a look that. at that. Yeah, I would agree. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm Cliff Kingsbury, I'm like asking for a let him look at it. Yeah, Zach Shacker for yeah. really on the field. Yeah. It's that the runner's forward progress will stop beyond the two. The play's under further review. This is certainly worth a review. Yeah, what they're going to see is Zach Shacker for number 56, the center, got pushed back by Thomas. This push right here is what caused the back to double up. And again, watch the push. 56 got stoned in the hole right yeah. there. Couldn't go any further. Forward progress is not stopped until right here. Yeah. He's a full half yard, in my opinion, yeah. short of where he needed to be. I thought the mark, and sometimes you see this from a side judge, he comes running in from the top of your screen much lower inside the two-yard line, which would have been enough for the first down. But forward progress, depending upon whether there was an early whistle, in our minds, I think you agree with me, should be behind the, the line to make. No question. But again, either way, it's a great two technique by Thomas, number 99, playing that nose. Boy, he manned up on that play. Dean Blandino, it's very difficult to see the line to make for a first down ever overruled, but what say you to this, Dean? Yeah, these are difficult to overturn. The key is when progress is ruled, the replay official can look at the position of the ball in relation to the line to gain. Here, the line to gain is the two-yard line, and without a look right down the line, it's tough to overturn. When it, whenever the angle is either behind the action or in front of the action, it's always going to distort where that football is. 
So without a big line, this is going to be tough to change. He yeah. may be short, but again, it's got to be indisputable. I, I would suggest our cart camera is a little yep. bit behind the play, Dean, as you as you said it. But that's about as close to down the line an angle as you can possibly get without a stationary camera right on that line to make, right? I mean, that's a pretty good look. It, it is a good look. It, it's absolutely a good look. And again, without a big line, though, they're going to have to find a point of reference and then look at that point of reference in relation to the football and try to find the exact spot. See, right here, at, at first glance, the ball probably did pierce the two. But, Spencer, I don't know that forward progress was stopped now, at that point. The question I have for Dean, Dean, do you, like the previous controversial play we had, do you think there's enough from two angles to piece together what likely happened in that scenario? from the angle that we had? If it's me, if it's me on these line of game plays, it's got to jump out. I'm going to let it stand if I'm looking at this. But again, they're going to try to piece a couple of different angles together and try to get that exact spot. And remember, Walt Anderson, in, the, in their operations area, they do have a rock, a location, just as the NFL would have in New York, where Dean used to be. We have one in the Big 12, too. Walt is at the command center there, but it's our replay official, Don Capital, who's going to say to him what he thinks and then figure out whether the people back at the home office agree or disagree. Yeah, the replay official center is where they're going to do it, but he also told us it usually takes a moment for them to come back, and so his opinion. This is taking a while. It's, it's going to take a while. So. And, and the, longer, the longer it goes, the chances of them overturning it uh -huh. get more likely, and when yeah. they start to write down, so maybe they have the angles that they're that with enough evidence to overturn. So now they may be discussing placement of the exactly. ball. Exactly, right, Dean? Correct. Correct. I, my rule is, if it goes past 60 seconds, <laughs> they're trying to figure yeah. out where the ball needs to be placed. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Defee again is on the uh, <laughs> on the phone with his uh, replay official Don Capral. We've seen Don and his crew many times, and he told us about in regional. It's the uh, it's the center, the officiating the center, official center, replay official mm -hmm. center, aka the rock. the rock. And we're waiting for the Rock to let us know. After reviewing the play, the runner ran into his own player at the two and a half, backed up on his own and was contacted by the defender at the two and a half yard line. That's where forward progress is. Thank It'll you. be fourth down and a half yard at the two and a half yard line. Dean, I think we need to give Spencer Tillman his, <laughs> his graduate's degree here. What do you, what do you, <laughs> this is more than just your bachelor's degree. Spencer's friend. two for two today. Yeah, how about that? Many thanks to you for your help though. I do believe that our cart camera there did give a a good enough angle for them to determine that it was worthy of an overturn. Thank you, Dean. Well, so, Dean gave me the precedent for, for it. You know, you, if you can have two angles to piece it together, that's what I'm looking at. All right, fourth down, and they're going to go out of the shotgun here. Only need about a half yard. Kyle Porter is the setback. They roll the dice. Ellinger should have the first down. Yeah. Not the touchdown, but a first down. Therefore, four more snaps. That's where his size and strength comes into play. His battery mate is a little bit slight of build, but again, number 11's got the power to push through. And whether or not he got his knee down, they're gonna go fast enough, he's got the first. Porter remains in the backfield. Nice. Oh boy, they, they read that. On the zone read, he kept it, and he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Jordan Brooks coming through there hard and fast. Johnson, two, number seven. They run this like a computer. Yeah, they did. Oh, man, big time. There's your boy Allen in the mix as well. Yep. Dakota, number 40, jumped in there. Deshaun anyway. was the first to get there. Yeah, Deshaun has just been playing. He's been all over the field playing nice assignment football off that edge, denying the big fella a chance to score. Looks like we've got an injured Red Raider back at the 10-yard line. Looks like Rico Jeffers, who had just come into the game, reserve linebacker number 11, and we'll be right back. Fresh, never frozen beef hamburgers, the official hamburger of the NCAA. Capacity crowd here in the state capital of Texas. Three-point game, and you'll see number 11 there, Jeffers. Coming in in this goal line situation, it looked as though Spitzer may have hyperextended his knee. 
on that block, that late block there from Warren. It looked, it looked rather nondescript, but when you're planting that ground, that foot in the ground, and you've got force coming back at you, we've seen very tough injuries like Achilles and things of that nature happen. Second and goal, the ball is spotted. At the three, now a trickery. Look at that trickery, and it goes to John Burt, and he throws it into the corner. Complete for Ellinger. Boy, talk about the kitchen sink. I mean, we're seeing it from Tom Herman, his offensive coordinator, Tom Beck. Well, Burke was trying to make it happen again. Ellinger trying to get everybody's attention down here. That's part of the deception. Yep. Again, the ball is going to be snapped. Direct He's snap. coming back here, but it's the speed of David Gibbs' defense that thwarts this. That's Allen number 40. That was a run pass option off of the option. So that was the choice to run it in or throw it. But the speed of number 40 changed everybody's mind. Dakota Allen from that will position. Third down and goal, and we've got a... Looks like a late timeout taken by Tom Herman. Texas takes his first time out of the half. 30 seconds. Well, so much for quarterback power from inside the five-yard line. <laughs> well, hey, this is about David Gibbs and his defense. Man, we, we know they're small and quick, but they're pretty stout up front, too. Now, again, you, this is the 10th iteration of this offensive line of Texas, and David Gibbs' front just took advantage of it. Much to the chagrin of that guy. Well, this uh, series has taken quite some time. What with the overturn and then the fourth down conversion. Cliff, of course, is Eric Morris has been with him all the way. Former player too. David Gibbs coming over from Texas left a pretty salty defense for Tom Herman to coach with Todd Orlando to get into a New Year's Six game and win against Florida State. And now has uh, really made this. There is David. Yep. Good talk guy, about man. a fun guy to talk to. He's really made them a reputable defense this year. He had to. He had to come a long way. Third and goal. Hempel maps in motion. Straight man cover. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Somebody's got to win. Ellinger. Big leg action. That ball is knocked away. Jordan Brooks. Boy, he and Dakota Allen are absolutely everywhere. The two outside backers. Again, give, give credit to Coach Gibbs for putting his guys in position and then freeing up the most athletic guy so that they can affect the quarterback. There you can see a hand on the ball is you're going to get. Whether it's Dakota Allen on the opposite side of number one, David Gibbs is the guy that's formulating the structure that gives them the guess, best chance to demonstrate their talents. Josh Rowland will try, try from 20 yards out. Right through. Well, the special teams, at least from a place kicking standpoint, holding up right now. We're tied at 10. There's an old saying in the Southwest, particularly in the state of Texas, we're tied at 10, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. No one's going to look in the brochure and see the record of Texas when you beat them. <laughs> and if Texas Tech can get this win, it will cure a lot of what ails you. The longer this game goes and Dakota Allen and company are playing the type of defense they are right now, they're not going to be intimidated. And I think recent history indicates the fact that they are competitive. So they're basically just underscoring what has been the history and over the last three years. This has been a competitive matchup. Magnificent setting here at Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium. Fantastic setting. Inside the Bill Little press box, one of the all-time great publicists here for many of those years. And now let's get uh, back to Mike Hill, who's got all the latest on what we're going to see at halftime tonight. Mike? Hey, coming up on the State Farm Halftime, I'll be joined by Petros Papadakis. We'll break down the first half between the Raiders and Longhorns. Plus, he goes down to pick. What impact would I have on the college football playoff rankings? And we'll get you set for Ohio State and Michigan tomorrow from the big house. Tim and Spencer, we'll see you at the half. All right, thank you, Mike. Let's get the latest on Rico Jeffers' health. He was injured a moment ago from Holly. And he came over to the sidelines and tried to put weight on his right knee, tried to stand up and walk, just couldn't do it. So they carted him off the field, brought a cart over, and he's in the locker room now. He couldn't walk up under his own power, so it looks like that's it for him tonight, Tim. All right, thanks, Ali. A pump fake and then just throwing it at the feet of the intended receiver, Justin Stockton. Here's McLean Carter. I love this guy's presence, Spencer. I can see exactly what Cliff was talking about when he said he's on time, that he 
has poise back there. He really does, and he, he kind of pulls something off of that ball because he saw Gary Johnson, number 33, playing in that roller position in his hip pocket. He was right there, could have contested that ball and could have been worse. Made the smart decision to put the ball on the ground. Second and ten. Nice. Stockton. We talked about home run hitters. Both teams have them. Deshaun Elliott trips him up, but a big gain out to the 44-yard line. Timmy, I really believe that's going to be the difference. Again, Stockton's working inside here. These explosive plays are what you need to do. When that edge gets set there, there will always be a lane right off the outside, in man on the line of scrimmage. He's got to be able to put stress on that. That's the way they're going to sustain success and get this Texas defense on its heels. Great blocking to Travis Bruffy, 79, the left tackle. Cleared out. Here's Stockton this time. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the 41-yard line. Johnson is there. All is well. And Roach, very active linebacking core. Like an old stretch play here. They went out again, and the, the force was coming from this direction, and they gang tackled them. And that's a slow developing play. Usually, Texas Tech is going to try to stretch that to a tighter point and not dilly dally in the backfield like they did on that play. Loss of two. Second and 12. Did you say dilly dally? Yeah, I did. Or was that dilly dilly? <laughs> <laughs> and the left hander oh, slings it. It's picked up. It's Chris Boyd, his old high school teammate, trying to take it all the way back. And he's down inside the 10. First mistake we've seen the lefty make. Well, he was trying to hit Dylan Cantrell. Again, that's number 14, the guy that they moved to that wide position at X because of his height and his length, but he slips and falls down. And again, <laughs> jumped in front of that one and headed the opposite direction. Chris Bull does a fantastic job of making him pay for the mistake and the slip by his fine, talented wide receiver. Well, an old teammate's eyes from high school days read the young quarterback and made him pay. That's a 44-yard return after the pick. Now let's see if this Texas Tech defense can be up to the test a second time as they're given a short field after the turnover. Ellinger remains the quarterback. Young. Young! Touchdown! Derek Kirkstetter and company again here doing a fine job of reaching and doing a nice job of washing it down to create a nice little crease in there. And he just goes through it like smoke through a keyhole and finds it and finishes off with leverage for the score. That's a quick one. Way to hit him right in the mouth after you get the pick. Well, that was a little more like it. They didn't get cute this time. Yep. None of this double reverse throwback to Ellinger, the quarterback. It started with the pick, Timmy. Again, the mistake. Boyd jumping in front of Cantrell. He goes down in the end zone, trying to get it in, but the big fella puts it out. That's what I'm talking about. Longhorn style. Fox College Football is sponsored by King's Hawaiian Foods. Irresistible since 1950. And by Deloitte Trading. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. Seventeen to ten, our score after the turnover and a quick touchdown. That was vintage power football in that quick sequence. I was a little surprised. If you look at what the offense has done tonight, they're spreading it around. But that was a little more of what you would really think Texas would go with against a team like Texas Tech inside the red zone. Timmy, I think it was the suddenness of it, the interception, and again the defense having to get in the frame of mind to respond quickly. This is about rhythm and predictability. And when you pop somebody in the mouth like that, it takes its toll. Touch back, and let's go back down to Los Angeles. Mike Hill for this at and game break. Greg Wolf. Yeah, tonight on FS1, Tim, it's the regular season finale for UCLA and Cal. A winner earning bowl eligibility. Could this be Josh Rosen's Rose Bowl finale? Ross Bowers will try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the nation's second-leading passer. Kickoff is at 10.30 Eastern. 7.30 Pacific on FS1. Tim Spencer, back to you. All right, thanks, Greg. I know you're working hard back there. Evan Moore will be working with Chris Myers on that telecast. Boy, Chris, 
<laughs> I kid because I care. I've known him for 30 plus years. He's double dipping, doing a lot of work in both the NFL as well as college football this year. <laughs> Justin Stockton and Trey King are in the backfield now for Texas Tech, trailing by seven from the 25. And that's McLean Carter trying to get something done by himself. Stopped by Malik Jefferson. I don't think he gained more than about a half yard. They'll give him one. We'll call it second and nine. Scott Alexander catching a bit of a cold, I think, next to me. <laughs> I wanted to say God bless you, but I'll just go for some time for now, okay? Second and nine. On the curl. That's T.J. Vasher, number nine, ahead for the first down. That's a gain of ten. Yeah, he was working against Devontae Davis again. Long. Devontae Davis is about 6'3". Again, the route is going to happen back over here. See a nice job of him coming back in the eyes and standing that foot. Pacing tempo back again at the line of scrimmage. McLean Carter now under pressure and down. That was a delayed blitz from Taquan Grantham, 49. And the freshman from Temple, Texas, made him pay. And I tell you, he plays the defensive tackle position. And the way he comes back and show you the speed that he's got to affect the quarterback, that's pretty darn impressive for a guy that's about 280 pounds. Young cat, too, freshman. Nice. Posing. Posting up. I got the quarterback that time. Second and 21. Is it uh, QT time? Now I he's think been, so. He's been the guy they've turned to when they needed a big play. Number two, Kiki QT. This time they go with Trey King. Cuts it up nicely. Good, solid run. Ahead to the 32-yard line. Puna Ford, big number 95, the nose, made the stop. Well, here's Stockton right here trying to block. Again, he's got his eyes looking at the inside, but he just comes right Whoops. past him. You got to keep your eyes trained on where the threat is coming from. It's not inside. It's going to be outside against this Texas front. Third down and 13 from the 33. Well, this is bringing two, dropping nine. You talk about three cloud. But These are how, vociferous clouds right now. But look how look how soft the corners are, though. They got pressure. Too. Looping it for the sideline, and it's almost picked off. Boy, Deshaun Elliott coming over from safety almost had the pick intended. For Dylan Cantrell, it's a punt formation coming up. The, the notion is there, and you want to take those shots downfield. And in fact, we talked about having to do that to keep Texas honest. But when they're playing 8, 10 yards off the ball, that shot's not going to be there, Timmy. And Deshaun Elliott, number four, playing at the strong safety position, was almost there to pick it and make him oh, pay Tom for it. Orlando, and look at Tom. <laughs> oh, man. He's a football man, isn't he? Yeah, got that square jaw and everything that goes with being a defensive coordinator. That boot end over end. Taken and out of bounds to Hemphill Maps, a 40 yard boot. Mm. So we'll see what the Horns can do on this sequence. Texas Tech's defense has been really outstanding, other than the one drive and then the short field after the turnover. That opening drive for Texas was really solid, but since that time, the Red Raiders have been up to it. Well, the pitch count for them defensively is getting up there, and the longer this game goes along and the more they have to defend, they're going to be at a disadvantage, clearly. Tonyl Carter is in the backfield for Texas as they open this drive from their 27-yard line. I'd like to take a shot first now. Looks like Ellinger will. On the cross, Colin Johnson incomplete at the 40. Pass was a little high, but well defended. I think it's a great notion, again, to loosen things up. Your, your offense is moving. They scored quickly last time they had the football. Your confidence level is high, and you've got a guy open. Yep. You can see press coverage right there. He's coming, working his way through the coverage, and he's going to be open. The ball is just thrown high and behind him. The now, David, there. David Gibbs makes no doubt about it. He's going to do everything he can to stop the run. A lot of times he'll leave his corners in isolation one-on-one. -on -one. Carter. Stopped at about 29, maybe a gain of two. Broderick Washington, 96, sophomore from Longview, Texas, making the tackle, a place where the Tillman family has great roots. That's right, Longview Lobos. Tim. 
Yep, and the home of the Pine Tree Pirates in the classification below them. And that red clay dirt. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Grandma Ella Booney, who's my great grandmother. A lot of big time, <laughs> a lot of big time high school football played there. Yep, sure was. And still is. Third down and eight. Under pressure off the edge. Gets wow. away. Brooks is in pursuit. That pass is caught. It's little Jordan Humphrey. And it's a first down. Timmy, this is the reason why they love this guy. We thought they had him dead to rights. Big as he is, 230 pounds, he spins out of there. Again, the pressure coming from the outside. He steps in the mix of that. How in the heck does he come out of that? He does and delivers a strike with a nice cushion enough to make a play. Outstanding job by Ellen. Ellinger now 10 of 16, 104 yards. That was a 21-yard gain from midfield first down. Now they looked up was a, a pass that clearly the route being run by Johnson was not in keeping with what Ellinger felt was going to be run. So a mix-up between the two there and second and 10 coming up. Well, Colin Johnson is a young sophomore, one of the great talented players on this team who will eventually mature. But again, that was just bad communication by both of them. I think the ball needed to go out of bounds, and it did. Colin eclipsed 1,000 yards for his career. This year's been the leading receiver coming into this game with 47 catches, just under 700 yards. A little wide receiver screen here. And it's Duvernay. And Devin stopped at the 41. That's going to be a yard shy of a first down, a gain of nine. Stopped by Desmond Smith, number four. This is what happens when you get him on these bubble screens. You got a chance. Shorts here with an opportunity. But again, the seven yards after the reception, the missed tackle. That's the tenth receiver Texas has utilized. And now they go right up the middle with Tony Carter. These two guys, Carter, a freshman, and Daniel Young, another, have been very effective and really are the future in this backfield for Tom Herman. Taking out a page out of Tech's offense, going pace and tempo. From the 37, Edinger. He's really good when he gets outside the pocket. Trying to appreciate here, throws that one away. Hempo maps, he was trying to get him to run a streak down the sidelines. He came back for it, and he just decided to airmail it. Second and ten. That's wise on your part, because that's typically what their coach to do is the scramble drill. The quarterback is running. If you're out of real estate to that side, you turn it into a vertical route. And again, these guys will mature as a group, and they'll understand what to do, because number 11 can get open and create. Boy, as good as the Texas Tech defense has been in this first half, Spencer, mm -hmm. Horn score here and get a two-touchdown lead. Yep. That's big. They really need a stop here, and Texas Tech's going to take a timeout. Texas Tech takes its first time out of the half. 30 seconds. What do you think we're going to see here from Texas? They were really effective with power football in the last sequence. We're seeing Ellinger also that extra back. You know, you really outnumber the defense when you use him in a running capacity. Well, this is second down, and it's when you start getting on the doorstep of the red area, the field starts to constrict. But again, understanding who's the quarterback here, the playbook actually expands because of his mobility. You'd rather think about it, move the quarterback out of the pocket, try to get some crossing routes underneath. You still got that. You can't necessarily go with the ball per se, but you got a lot of options because of number 11. Red Raiders defense now has been on the field for quite some time, too. We shouldn't lose sight of that fact. Horns have held the football for quite some time. Texas Tech has had some quick possessions. I, I really like this idea and this trail technique underneath. It's a natural rub. Ellinger again flushed from the pocket. Brooks in hot pursuit again, and he unloads it. That's the thing that the Raiders have now, Spence, and you can tell when, when Ellinger gets out of the pocket, guys that are that quick playing outside linebacker will hurry a few throws as opposed to give your receivers time to make magnificent comeback routes. And you can look at the athleticism as we look at David Gibbs here. His back end has had the greatest year-over-year -year turnaround of any team in the nation in terms of their ability to defend in these situations. They are absolutely staying in the hip pocket of these receivers in man coverage. Kyle Porter's in the backfield. It's third down and 10. Ellinger again. 
flushed from the pocket and just has to give it up. There's really no one no, to throw no it to. to that is a tremendous coverage play by Texas Tech secondary. Brooks and company, I'm, they are locked in, man. This is this coverage scheme has so much integrity and the athleticism that forces the quarterback, even with soft coverage here, a nice pad. You got underneath coverage with the safety that's got that. Look at the proximity, the closeness to these white jerseys, to those orange jerseys. Man, this is tough. Tough to get open. So it's fourth down. Cameron Batson is standing at his 10. See what Dixon can do trying to pooch one here. End over end variety. That's nice. And it's caught <laughs> at the seven yard line. 30 yard boot. And they got the job done there. Well, coming up, it's the State Farm halftime show. Mike Hill and Petros Papadakis. Is there anyone more versatile than our Greek friend from USC, the former team captain back in the day? Master of many, failure of few. That's right. Give it to Petros He knows what to do. <laughs> Big day. And I believe it's just the first. What we saw today from Pittsburgh, only the beginning uh, yeah. of what college football can be. Remember, Dave Wanstead's team. Ten Wani's years ago. out. Yep, Wani's out in uh, Michigan with Rob Stone and Robert Smith and Matt Lyon in the gang for coverage tomorrow on Fox of the Michigan-Ohio State game. But it was his team <laughs> that blew up the BCS in 2007, beating West Virginia in the backyard brawl. And today, Pitt did it for Pat Narduzzi. That pass from behind the line of scrimmage is loose. Wow. That's loose. That's a free ball. And I think it's recovered by QD, and it is at the two-yard line. Really on the field it was a backwards pass. Yes. Second down. Second down. Well, that was great presence of mind by Kiki to get on top of it because that's clearly a lateral. Well, he's sitting there on the three-yard line, and that ball is received. That well, might have been right at the three, but his body was back around the two. You they were ruling where the ball was. You talk about dangerous. The on the field yeah. with the backwards pass. That plays under further review. Yeah. Now they can take a look at it. It would only mean the difference in about three yards, but <laughs> that was very dangerous, Spence. Well, I don't know if it makes that much difference, to be honest with you, because if they place it where the ball is, he, the play began. The quarterback was at the three, but uh, again, it was only like one yard in my where, where it's first released and where it's first touched is what matters. From my point of view, it looked like it was behind the line and first released ahead of where he's the ball at, was touched he's later. He's sitting at the three, and then the ball touched at the two and a half. Two and a half, three. I mean, it's, it's almost immaterial. Well, it would have been a fumble recovery for Texas if QT had not gotten on top of it. That's the dangerous part. But I'm not quite sure why they need to I'm, review I'm with yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> when people wonder about, and we touch on it often in the offseason, how do we speed up play? It's sort of a common sense thing, really, when you stop and think about it. It has virtually no consequence since Texas did not recover the ball. If we were talking about a change of possession, now you got something to talk about. Now they could possibly move them back to about the one-foot line, but that's that's about it. Because if they recovered it... It's well, where Mike, it's recovered. Well, it's from. Well, Mike DeFee is on the line. Let's talk with Dean Blandino down our line in Los Angeles. Dean? Yeah, so the key here is the point of first release to where the ball is first touched. It looked like the ball was released at the two and then went slightly forward about the two and a half. So they'll make this an incomplete forward pass, put the ball back at the line of scrimmage, and also reset the clock because the clock continued to run ah. as a result of the ruling of a backward pass. You know, at first, I thought it was at the three, and now that we're looking at it, and I hear the authoritative, dulcet tones of Dean, I'm going to agree with him. I think that should be an incomplete pass, but it was dangerous in that if it had been considered a lateral, we're talking about a potential change of possession. After further review, the pass was forward and incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 at the eight-yard line on the right hash. Well, we the game clock to 133. Between 133. you and Spencer, Dean, you're three for three in the first half. Congratulations and many thanks. <laughs> we got it going tonight. <laughs> Extra turkey for you. Big difference in terms of where the ball is located, obviously, now at the eight yard line. Dean had the element of the time of the clock, and that's important. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> if they get something going here. Yeah. Second and ten.
McLean Carter in his very first start against the big school in the state of Texas. Texas wants to bring pressure here late. Yep. And it's Stockton. Not much there. Maybe to the nine. Malik Jefferson making the tackle. Omenahu also in there, number 90. Well, Malik Jefferson had to get accustomed to moving inside. He had Texas, fashioned himself as an Texas outside second linebacker. Second timeout of the half. It's been a team guy this year. We've got a timeout. Third down and nine as we come back. You see the time remaining. Just how chancy you want to be. They've taken a lot of risk with this young guy. Only have the one interception, but could have had more. What, what would you do here? Friends, you think about the first quarter, he was outstanding, but now yeah. he's hit he's hit a few roadblocks. Yeah, he, he's hit a couple of bad flat passes to the field, but those were much a function of the play calling as it was his ability. Here we go. Huge pressure. Nice, nice play there. Going to Stockton. Look at that run. Look at that wow. run. Four. Yards after contact out to the 30. Deshaun Elliott after the 22-yard gain. Well, they decided to run baby run right there. Well, he came off this edge right here and watch him. He does a nice job of sucking them in and then cuts right through there and finds a little lane. Almost lost the ball on the back end of that. Pulls it down and gets significant yardage. Gets him out of trouble. Well, he has four carries for 40 yards, and he was running heavy right there. And, and those runs, two of them were explosive, 20-plus yards or more, and that's that's what you need to win against Texas. Had uh, three 100 games this season, 100-yard games. He's got 40 right now in the first half. Quick slam, wow. picked off. Intercepting. It's Devontae Davis. Cliff is in disbelief. Mm. Wow. Well, you got a little field position, Spencer. He threw it on a quick slant behind his receiver. Well, Davis was there just waiting on it. Again, he's got long arms. He's 6'3", about 100. 205 pounds and so he can run and finish as well did a nice job of anticipating coming underneath that ball and plucking it boy that's, I, I don't that's twice. I don't understand the play call though you just ran it for 22 got yourself a first down that pass was clearly thrown behind his receiver this kid's starting his first game I mean I don't disagree with you but he's just trying to run the offense and, and do exactly what Texas has allowed him to do and run where the, the weakness is of their defense and that was just a bad decision. Well now you've given Texas a chance to get a two touchdown lead before the mission. Ellinger's pass to Warren on the cross and he's down to the three maybe the two. That's maybe in. Down. Chris Warren touchdown. They're going to wave him down. They're going to say forward progress stopped at the one. Wow. That's big with the clock at 35 ticks. You know, it's legal to push forward if you want. Well, big Chris Warren is a, is a load. He's ain't gained a few pounds. Again, you are allowed to push, Timmy, and they're going to go fast here, but... Out of the shotgun. Yeah, they're going to check it. Yep, where he was marked. Toniel Carter was replaced by Daniel Young, and before they could get it to him, they stopped play. I think they want to see if the seat of his pants and the ball, <laughs> either one or a portion of one, had crossed that plane that is the end zone for a touchdown here. In real time, it certainly looked that way. Well, Chris Warren gets some help right here. So and again, pull. you can see, you can't pull, but the, the butt is down here on the ground. Yeah. Young was pulling, though. If you can look down the line, you can see if the ball was across the front of the end line to make a judgment. I, I, I want to go back again for just a moment though Spencer about the decision to throw there with that young quarterback he was one of his last 10 in the air and you got a 22 yard run and it's, you're in a one score game before the end of the well, half. Tim a lot of times coaches don't like to break tendencies if they, even the guy is struggling they will try to force their hand to make them defend everything and I, I agree with what you're saying to some degree but I, I want to show confidence in my quarterback okay. and he, he's starting for the first time I'm going to say hey, look you had a couple of bad choices one of them's on me I had you throwing across the field tough throw but that last one was on me but you listen I, I, I think you run your offense. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds left now, the ball just inside the one-yard line. 
He's just got to be confident and respond from that. You know, the, the crisis is not going to make you. It's just going to expose who you are, and that's what we're looking for. Who is this kid? Comes back. You know, his receiver's working in, just physically got manhandled underneath that coverage there. And again, Devontae Davis just worked him over. Pass was thrown, I thought, a little bit behind him. And he was uh, jockeying for position. And you're right, out physical the intended receiver to make the play. Listen, this is not a comment and commentary, but let me tell you something. Devontae Davis is a man. Yeah. I mean, he's from Miami, Florida. Yeah. He's a tough guy. He's a no frills guy. He comes to play. He's got an edge to him. And that's the reason why they have him back there at that cornerback position, because yeah. he's long. 6'3", 200, you're right. He can be very physical. Here again is the look at the play. And you see Warren, of, of course, he's been playing some tight end. Yep. The injuries to that position, as well as a running back. He broke freshman single-game records in this game here two years ago in defeat. After further review, the William LaField stands short of the goal line. Police set the game clock to 36 seconds. 3-6, and the clock will wind on my signal. Well, Warren was not going backwards, that's for sure. Then Avante Dorsey came in there, and he pushed him backwards. As you said, he's been playing tight end. He's 250-plus now. He's a heavy back. Texas Tech defense has been playing with a short field this entire quarter. First and goal. It's Young. Not this time. Stopped by Dakota Allen. Great penetration again by number 40. Ian Brooks have just been incredible in this first half, trying to keep Texas Tech within shouting distance. Well, the push came. You can see Dakota got him on about the two-yard line. He's playing on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. That's how you play defense. Texas takes his third time out of the half. 60-second timeout. Police set it, the clock to 28 seconds. Well, they'll Too utilize late. what is their final timeout which will have an impact on the kind of play call that Tom Herman has. Stay right where you are. By SoFi, a modern finance company. Well, obviously, they've got to be talking about what can we do to get a play in without... But they've, they've exhausted their timeouts. It's about matchups. When you get down here, you call a timeout so you can exploit the weakness. And there is no weakness in this front, particularly as they demonstrated Texas Tech up front. There is no weakness. Tom, Thompson. Barnes, Washington across the front as a as it gets. Young, no, 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 stop. Dakota Allen again, and here's the problem. He can't stop the clock. Now nope. they're saying there's been a fumble, and Dakota Allen's coming out of there with it. Well, I think they may be signaling down. Player was down before the ball came out. What's bad about this, from Texas Tech's point of view, is the clock has stopped. Police, police set the clock to 18 seconds. 1-8, wind it on my signal. Again, they cannot stop the clock. Third and goal. Texas Tech takes his second time out of the half. Well, now David Gibbs wants to talk. Mm. Which you can make a case gives Texas a, an opportunity to design something here. You'd think they would have to go in the air because they're out of timeouts. They've ruled forward progress at the two, so there's no way they can look at it from a fumble standpoint. I think Cliff was lobbying for a turnover there. He was not going to get, and once you stop to play with a forward progress and the whistle, that's not reviewable. I think the story here is, is that the defensive line play, what David Gibbs is getting from his guys, Zach Barnes, number 12, the defensive tackle, Thomas and Broderick Washington, 96, the opposite end. Man, for three men working against five, the and then of course. The field is that the runner was stopped. Plays under further review. Ball did pop out, no question. But if the whistle had stopped play, then <laughs> forward progress being stopped is not supposed to be reviewable. But that certainly looks like a fumble that to me. That ball is out. Yeah. Ball I think Cliff's out. got an excellent point. But uh, Dean was telling us. The runner's forward progress was stopped. That plays under further review. So, Dean, let's. Uh, Take a listen to the play and see if in real time we hear a whistle. I don't hear a whistle. Oh, the whistle was late. The whistle, the whistle was after that. Late. You know, Dean, I, Dean, so I want to get your thoughts on this. 
Sure, sure. So there's two potential rulings. If they rule the runner down, they can look at it for a fumble. If they rule forward progress, they cannot create After a review, fumble. The ruling, the ruling on the field stands. Please set the clock to 18 exactly. seconds, 1-8. Okay. okay. So forward progress was, in fact, the call, and you can't review that, right? Correct, and, and they really shouldn't even have looked at it. And yeah. forget about the whistle. It's the ruling that kills the play. Now, exactly. All right, here we go. Third down again from the two. Porter's in the backfield now. Ellinger, Texas Tech rushing to get the right defensive grouping in before they put the ball down and allow it to be snapped with 18 on the clock. Ellinger wow. throws it away. That would, could have been considered a lateral almost. That was close to the line. It just on the field was an incomplete forward pass. Fourth down. Intended for Warren. It just came out of his hand. He, yep. It just slipped out of his hand. It was almost like he had a string on the end of it. And oh, what a tremendous win, though, for Texas Tech defensively here with their backs against the wall literally yeah. at the one-yard line. He just threw it in the ground. And again, it, it, I'm not so sure the ball would have been completed anyway. The little faux mesh. And again, he just throws it in the... Yeah. Throws it in the ground. Warren was covered. So here's Joshua Rowland with a severe angle left, but from 20 yards out for the field goal opportunity. And he gets it through. Something to remember, though. Texas Tech won the toss and deferred when this game got underway. So they will get the ball to open the second half, and that is a huge momentum builder for David Gibbs and that Texas Tech defense. Well, I think David has done a tremendous job, and that front has kept them in this game. Again, they're 4-0 and oh when they lead in the turnover department. They've got to get a couple of those to keep that statistic running. Ten points off of those turnovers, and you'd think it could be a lot more than that at this stage. Well, tonight is being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. The third most points Texas has scored in the first half this year, and they've been hard earned, particularly given the short field that they've had to work with and being stymied by this really stingy Texas Tech defense, except for the quick turnover off the interception return where Young went in from nine yards out right away. They've they've been pretty out. And were this uh, uh, anything other than the Texas Tech team that we've known in recent years, 10 points they were able to score against TCU is not bad for a half, but they should have more points on the board, no question. This kick is headed out, and the touchback. Well, a quick recap of what we've seen here in the first half. Off that opening drive, Armani Foreman got the shallow cross, and the rest he did on his own. Then when they got inside, of course, they went to the quarterback himself, the rookie, doing the job. And then the, the zone inside read by the fullback. Nice job scoring. Daniel Young punches it in. That came after the turnover, that quick power play that we discussed on the first play from the nine-yard line after McLean Carter had turned it over. It's happened twice in this half. But to say you're only down 10 at this stage, given the 14 to this second quarter for Tech, not bad. Coming up, it's the State Farm Halftime Show. Mike Hill, Petros Papadakis in Los Angeles. Stay tuned, they're gonna have some fun at the break. Let's take a look at the Duracell first half highlights. Some may take umbrage to the thought that one school is bigger than the other. Guess what? These are the two largest bands, over 700 musicians simultaneously. A little detente <laughs> at halftime as you look at the numbers in the first half. And as we bring you back inside our booth alongside Spencer Tillman and yours truly, Tim Brando, you'll hear from Holly Saunders momentarily. It was the tale of two quarters, yeah. really, for McLean Carter. Yeah, no glass notes on the field for him, though. But it was bright. You know, he threw for significant yardage in the quarter that he was there. He was 11 of 15, 175 yards. 
He worked the inside zone game, had a one scoring touchdown on the ground. He was absolutely stellar. Then the second quarter, he ended up being one of ten, had a couple of picks in that frame. So again, it's a tell of two contrasting styles. Second half play calling perhaps had something to do with that, Tim. But ultimately, Cliff Kingsbury's got to find a way to uplift this guy, making his first start ever at this level. I think it's he's going to be fine. I really do. I look at his countenance. He's responding in a way that you think is consistent with the starter. There you see the numbers. It illustrates the, the tale of those two quarters. No question about it. And listen, I agree in principle with your point of view. And certainly when you come from the air raid, a, a.k.a. Mike Leach, you keep chunking it. And you go for fourth down when you need to. But as you mentioned, it's time to abandon the air raid sometimes to get a win based on the way your team's been playing. As good as this Tech defense performed, my only thoughts about that last pass that was picked off after a great run was at some point situational circumstances by alter approach offensive yeah sometimes offensive coordinators can overthink things eric morris has been around as you pointed out yeah. was with mike leach for a couple of years as well he knows what he's doing qt will let this one go down into the end zone for a touchback holly saunders spoke with both coaches at halftime yeah tim talked to coach kingsbury on the way in and he was fired up about the big stomp that his right before the half and he should be he said that they'll definitely carry that momentum into the third quarter and he was also non-committal when asked if there would be any changes made at quarterback in the second half so we might look for that also coach herman speaking of quarterback said that they will definitely be looking to add more pressure to texas tech's quarterback in the second half and as for offensively they're tense tim he says they're tense and they just need to relax you went, yeah, that's think about that. What tense means to a head coach? Well, that, I was thinking about pretty transparent for yeah, yeah. coach to say what he says. He's going to dial up against a young quarterback making his first start. I think that's wise, wise counsel. Justin Stockton is the setback, and they go option to the boundary side, and nothing doing here is Puna Ford, 95. That big senior from Hilton Head, South Carolina, making the stop. All of them were on their high horse there. You talk about looking at them all on a starboard, a right side charge. Everybody's hell bent for election. Roderick Washington, Thomas, Barnes, all of them running and chasing big time. Ah. Puna looks like he's holding that uh, right hand of his. Takes himself out after the loss of five. It's second down and 15. Marcus Felton and Stockton in the backfield now. Helping out with protection for the left hander as he looks long. For Basher. Wow, what a hand. I think he got it. What a Hands of Velcro. Hands of Velcro inside the 40 yard line of Texas. That's why they have him out there. With that 6 6 frame, Basher can go up and oh. pluck that one out of bounds. Oh my. That's exactly what Eric Moore said. We moved those guys out to Z and X, respectively. Cantrell opposite of him to take advantage of their lead. That's exactly what young McLean Carter needed. That'll boast your confidence right there, man. You got to take your shots every now and then. 40 yards on that play. Already three more, 30 more passing yards than the entire second quarter on one play. As you see QT, the targeted receiver, incomplete there, second and 10. This is just, protection was great, first of all, and he throws that ball up. This is not a 50 50 ball. If you are six foot six and the guy is six foot one, barely around there about Davis trying to defend with you, that, that's an unbelievable mismatch there. Great job of going up and high pointing that ball with the acrobatic catch. And that's a. Physical corner, too, as you mentioned, Devontae Davis out of Miami, a grown man playing corner for Texas. Stockton. Well, got a heck of an elbow there, didn't he? That's Malik Jefferson will be credited with that tackle, but Deshaun Elliott got an extra shoulder in there that popped him pretty good. Yeah, that came from that strong safety position. You can see the inside read there. Stockton changes direction as Malik, and then the, oh boy, that was a knock big time. Here it is. Oh, Elliot. That'll make you change your mind, man. Lowering that shoulder. Five for 46 now for Justin Stockton. That's 9.2 per tote. And a quick timeout taken here by Texas Tech with the ball 34 yard line of Texas. That's unfortunate. This happening so early, they take that timeout. Texas Tech, especially Texas if you plan on this one being a close yep. game, which I'm sure Cliff Kingsbury's hoping for that. But how about this? No need for any stick'em, not in today's game, not with that big paw. Just underway in the second half. Fox.
Fox College Football is sponsored by MasterPass, the simple, secure way to pay from your bank, online, and on your phone. By Go RVing, find your way. Go RVing. And by Best Buy. Open this last. Don't put Bevo in a corner. <laughs> right? By the way, we're not that far away on the calendar from uh, up there is an RV. Spencer, uh, yes. have a Christmas <laughs> vacation on an endless loop when I get back to the ghetto. <laughs> Third down and four. Holly told us that coach was non committal about changing quarterbacks. He obviously has confidence in this one per Holly. And trail in motion. And they'll swing it out to nice Kitty. They were red, beautiful there. Uh, Devontae Davis atoning for that catch that was made, that marvelous catch just moments ago, right past him with a beautiful read right there, and it's fourth and seven. Well, he's 6'3", 205, and he just worked through that perimeter block, and you can see him, again, just that big frame to work right through and up through the shoulder to make a form tackle there. You got to engage, you got to be physical, you got to be strong, you got to finish. Now, this is not uncommon for Texas Tech. Fourth and seven on the plus side of the field. Look at this space right here. Yep. If they can get past that front line, they got a shot. There he is. The cross, now the pressure. Cantrell, he's got it. First down inside the 30. Tremendous ad lib by McLean Carter there. That crossing pattern was taken away, and then he hung with it. Yeah, the shallow cross was coming there, and again, he's working the opposite direction. I'm telling you, working your body that way to throw that pass is not an easy thing to do. From the 28, that one was boxed from the beginning. Trying to make the handoff to Stockton wasn't easy, and Brecken Hager yeah, just into the game after the targeting of a week ago. You see the problem he had with the snap. Brecken, who uh, was just salivating the entire first half, waiting to get into the game. He's part of a legacy here at Texas. Team's leading tackler, son of Britt Hager, a great All-American, in for his opportunity to play in a big moment. Sixth tackle for loss for Texas. Second and 13. That pass is thrown low, incomplete, and uh, we have, I believe we do have a marker. It was a late marker, but it does come out. Cameron Batson, the intended receiver. Yeah, he's out of Oklahoma City. He was working that underneath route. You know, he's working this inside route right here. Again, you can see when he comes down out of his route. Pass interference. Defense number Ooh, seven. That's to the head. Spot foul, automatic. First foul. Fans don't like it. He went to the head. Well, it was a job of him to get behind the coverage and get open. Should have been a completed pass, but for the chuck to the head. Well, that's a first down with the ball at the 24-yard line. That's only the second penalty committed by Texas. Boy, Todd Orlando's defense, not only really good, all right, and getting off the field great on third down, but that's just their second penalty of the game. Playing with a great deal of strength and here goes Stockton off the left side nice dragged down in space by Chris Boyd who's having himself a whale of a night Chris has got that big frame too 195 your boy from Gilmer he does a nice job of showing the speed and the burst to get lateral right there to make an open Stockton you know it's kind of a little smaller but the bottom line is he's brought down by an intent cornerback sitting out there in Chris Boyd second down and eight here comes some Fake reverse action, now nice bootleg screen. action, out to Stockton, he's got a convoy. Look at Texas rally to the ball though. He'll be shy of the first down. And again, it's Boyd, was hustling over there with Jason Hall, 31 at safety. Senior from Grand Prairie, to help on the tackle. Interesting call into the boundary, the short side of the field again. You know, you, you want to take advantage of people's speed, but you got a lot of white jerseys in a restricted space, and usually those you want to get it to the wide side where that back can navigate and get extra yards. Felton, the junior, 27, is checked into the backfield. Third down and two. T.J. Fasher who made that big 40-yard catch. is playing down to the bottom of your screen. Fade ball down here. I really like this. He's looking that way. Yep. Let's it fly into the corner. Incomplete. <laughs> Tipped away by Deshaun Elliott. He was looking for cutie. 
And it's fourth and two. Well, his read is the safety who was sitting on the inside of the hash. That meant all both receivers, two of them were man coverage. So anything could be working on that side over here, whether it was going to come from the crossing route, this part of the field is where the opportunity was, and he saw it based on the read of the safety who was inside. Long way for him to travel to defend on the backside, but Texas says, oh, nothing over here, big boy. 34-yard try now for Clayton Hatfield. He's got one tonight, but it has been an event-filled year. Boy, they have been absolutely on it tonight, though, haven't they? Money. Forget about practice. The lights <laughs> are on. We're on Fox tonight. we got to make these threes. Practice? <laughs> That tower, a fixture here in the downtown area and the campus, University of Texas and uh, Stockton. You might recall he took that blow, that glancing blow, what appeared to be maybe concussion protocol after this hit absorbed by Elliott after he had been tackled by Malik Jefferson. Get it? And then Hager got him, of course, and threw him to the turf. So. Those are exhibits A and B to why he may be headed to the locker room. I think that better safe than sorry because those yep. are significant blows to the turf. Little Jordan Humphrey awaits this kick from Michael Barton. Porter lets it go through the end zone for the touchback. And that's where the horns will take over first and ten. That was a huge 40 yard completion to Vasher. Helped set up that field goal. And you see here, Texas, from an offensive standpoint, they've had their issues inside the red zone, particularly after those turnovers that they received. But they've certainly spread the wealth, Spencer. Well, you remember what I, I talked about, you know, Tim Beck. And I said, hey, Tim, you got about 10 different receivers that have at least 100 yards. Is that a, as much a function as we look at Coach there? Is that much a function of not having a playmaker, a guy you can go to? Or are you intentionally trying to spread it out? And he says, yeah, we just don't have a guy right now. Yeah. On first and ten, play fake, and Ellinger's pass to Colin Johnson is taken. And he rides the defender with him. He gets out for what appears to be a first down. They've gone quickly, too. They've opened the playbook, Timmy. A lot of trickeration there involved here. Throw back to the quarterback. Ellinger was on the receiving end of that one. A little, little doopity do right here. Snap, direct. And then back to the quarterback who was waiting out there on the boundary to get a reception as well. So they pulled out all the stops to try to affect yeah, An offense can make the case that they got a little too cute in one <laughs> sequence there in the red zone. They came back and went with power and got a young touchdown when they got inside the 10 after the turnover. Young stopped here at the 39 yard line. Well, I can tell you this back end of Texas Tech is flying around Coleman, Gilmore, Dakota Allen have been active all day. Peyton Temple now, Timmy. Second and six. Wow. Young bouncing out. Daniel Young. Boy, Tom Herman loves this kid. You can see why. Plays with passion. Freshman from Houston, Texas, 24 yards. Bonte Dorsey with the tackle. With 30 wins on the outside, he just ran right past him. And again, he's got to get his feet underneath him. But it's a nice job of open field running. Back to pace now. A scrimmage now at the 36 of Texas Tech. Nice cushion here. 46 yards for Young. He'll get no to that on this play Thomas is Michael just all over. Thomas number 99 the big senior just call him Big Mac <laughs> Big Mike has been tough to deal with this season he along with Allen and Brooks the two outside linebackers have been a steadying force of this defense on the curl that pass incomplete Johnson the intended receiver he was wrapped up by Demarcus Fields number 23 where DeMarcus Fields made a big time deflection in traffic there. Just showing you some great athleticism and ball skills. You can see him working right in here. And then he's going to turn, get underneath that ball, get that left hand over there. Could have been called perhaps for contact, but that's just a tremendous job of timing that ball to stick that mid in there, deflect it away. Kyle Porter now in his setback on third and nine. They go trips to the top of your screen. Ellinger. Rifles it out towards the boundary. He's Johnson is going to rule him out of bounds. And yeah. again, it's Fields giving coverage there. The red shirt freshman from Taylor, Texas. Let's call Fields the blanket, man, because he's all <laughs> over him today. Look at him. Press coverage. He's locked in. That's what we're looking at. Their version of that three cloud rolled up on the outside. When you got guys that can play athletic like that, yeah, you take that every single day. 
Fourth down and nine. It appears the Longhorns will go for it here. Kind of in a position where you know it's outside your field goal kicker's range. We asked Tom, he said, where would be the go mark? And he said, I think if we scrimmage at about the 20, we'll likely kick. Anything outside of that, we're more than likely going to go for it. And Tom we'll wants to talk it about it. Yep. Beautiful night here in Austin, Texas. Hope you're enjoying the of game. Offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Well, instead of taking the timeout, he took the delay of game penalty, so they will boot it away. Our aerial coverage is being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Cameron Batson is back deep. Dixon will go end over end and try to get it into the coffin corner. And he that for success. When you've got that kind of punter, Josh Thompson, number 29, makes the catch at the one. Hey, you kick it, we'll run underneath it. No doubt about this one. It's a good day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 20 to 13, our score. Spencer, this is the third time that they've been backed up. Inside the two, they'll start from the one this time. And uh, McLean Carter, to this point, has had an open playbook to work with from his offensive coordinator, Eric Morris, and of course his air raid head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. Look at that average field position. Good things didn't happen, though, when they were operating from their own end zone. So let's see how he takes care of the ball. Helps, mm. helps to have a punter. Well, this, if it's a false start, will only cost him about six inches. Maybe eight. <laughs> Part of the snap. Yep. Ball start. Offense, number nine. Half the distance to the goal. First down. T.J. Vasher is guilty. As I said, that's probably the least amount of yardage lost by penalty that Texas Tech has had all season. That's all frustrating when a receiver does that. And I know he's away from the ball, but he knows the count. And all he has to do is watch on sight when the ball is snapped. Fell to the setback. Well, he barely got out. He barely got outside the end zone. He may have gained about a yard. That is it, and it's uh, Malik Jefferson, 46. Now these are those situations where you've backed up, Tim. You got to cut down your splits to make the adjustment. You know, you don't have to stay true to, you know, five yards depth or heel at five yards. You're in the end zone. Accordion that thing up and get out of there. Second down and nine. Pressure off the edge. Going for the boundary, and Dylan Cantrell incomplete again. Chris Boyd right there with him. He had a pick earlier tonight, number two. On well, the previous run, there was not much space for him to navigate, and again, you know, getting off that play, I don't know what that call was about. Again, the, the throw after the run. Because again, that, that's the, the, the good thing that didn't happen for Cliff. He threw that ball out there, was almost picked. That's a difficult throw to throw three quarters of the field backed up in your end zone. I mean, the matchup didn't work. Dylan hadn't done a great job tonight working from that extra position to warrant that throw. Speed 32 and Felton 27, the setbacks. They drop eight, rush three. Pressure. Over nice. the middle, incomplete. Boy, Basher. As great as he was on that 40-yard reception, he could not haul that one in, and uh, really an easier catch to execute. Well, he didn't haul it in, but that's the guy you need to be taking the shot with. Now, I understand why you want to throw to both sides to keep balance, make sure they don't roll cover to that side. Again, that's the guy I would be working with on 50-50 ball to the wide side of the field. If they're going to be determined to go man coverage against that long, tall guy, I'm looking at his way every time. How badly did Cliff want that one? And Azolo will punt it away. End over end and short. Fair catch is called for by Tempo Maps. Actually got 44 out of it. We got a marker down. We're going to mark marker down, so we'll have to check that one out. Mike DeFee was awfully busy in the second quarter, and he's going to tell us what the circumstances are here. The flag is actually down at the two yard line. During the kick, 
holding number two of the receiving team. Ten yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. So that'll back them up and reduce the field position just a bit when the Longhorns take over when we come back. Thompson. 20 to 13 our score. Texas, this is the punt that helps set up the difficult field position for Texas Tech. Yeah, this is Josh Thompson. Watch him work. If he gets bounced out of side, but as a gunner, you have to make an effort to get back in. Bounds, and he does, and settles it right there on the one yard line. That's outstanding special teams play right there. Well, they lost 10 yards because of the hold by Texas on the punt that Texas Tech just affected. But right now, it's the punting game that's been the difference in field position. And here goes Gerard Hurd on the jet sweep all the way to the 41 yard line of Texas Tech on first down. Joshon Johnson came over there and tapped him a little bit after it came down, but not before six significant gain. Now they're going pace. 17 yards for Gerard Hurd, the former quarterback. Still would be the third option for Texas. Is Taking some snaps during preparation for this game. And a lot of games. That ball's on the ground. It's recovered it. by Tech. It's Jordan Brooks. And the Red Raiders get the first key turnover. And that's what David Gibbs' team has been doing all season long. Tony Carter coughed it up. First big turnover by Texas tonight. Tony did a fantastic job initially of seeding the ball, but it comes out after he's touched up a little bit. And you talk about David Gibbs. When this team is plus two in the turnover wow. category, they are four and oh. That's Vontae Dorsey that put his hat on the leather of that football and forced it to pop out right there. Yeah, Dorsey needed to get his head up on that one, but it, was, it worked out in his favor because the ball came up. Back in the day, Tim, they used to tell you to put your hat on the ball, but you got to really be careful about putting that crown down and bending your neck, but David, He's going to take that one any day. You think? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> First and 10 for the Red Raiders from their 35. They have the only points of this half so far. A field goal after a beautiful 40-yard catch by Basher set it up. And that's DeMarcus Felton spinning and turning. And ahead to about the 38, maybe the 39. Reckon Hager again, 44, making the stop. Right out of Westlake High here in Austin, Texas. Texas needs to be careful, get lined up quickly, but when they do pressure, they better pressure from the correct side. Quick pitch and nice a throwback. Throw and now trouble. Unloading it. And flat. Yeah, it yep. should be. I don't think he was outside the tackle box, or was he? They're going to discuss it. Chris Nelson with the pressure. Remember the ball was lateraled and then thrown back. Quarterback had moved away from the pocket. Question will be, did he? did he not and he did not get outside the tackle box so it's a loss of down and he didn't get it to the line of scrimmage either intentional grounding offense number six loss of down at the spot of the foul third down number six gave the ball up when he got it back he cannot legally ground the ball he has to get it in the area of a receiver and he did not well, there was no one over there. He was actually standing on the hash, yeah. and he ended up being three yards inside of it. So clearly, he was not outside that box. But there was no one over there. That's what they yeah. got him on. Herman wanted it, and he got it. Nelson with the pressure. Cameron Batson, by the way, a former high school quarterback who got that play going, but it never really developed because of the pressure from Nelson. Third and 22. Texas playing conservative, though. Two deep safeties here. McLean Carter throws it again behind the intended receiver Batson. That was dangerous. Could have been picked. Elliott was in coverage. And it's fourth and 22. So they got a turnover and went promptly backwards offensively, Texas Tech. So Orlando's got to be bumped. Well, points off turnovers are important and appropriate if you're trying to knock off a team on the road, perhaps fighting for your coach's job. Got to make those plays. Got to convert them. Fanazolo will boot it away. Impel Maps is back deep. He's standing around the Texas 35. You know, you talk about Dixon, how good he is. This young man, Fanazolo, also coming from Australia, has been outstanding, too. That's a 46 yard boot. Well, tomorrow, it's one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports. Remember the old 10 year war between. Woody and Bo. Now it's Harbaugh and Urban. Number nine, Ohio State, battling Michigan. 
in the big house, as Bobby Ufer used to call it. Coverage begins at 10.30 a.m. Eastern only on Fox or stream it live on Fox Sports Go. Urban Meyer bore with an 85% win percentage at the best in college football among active coaches. Well, by the way, we just saw Stockton come back onto the field. Remember, he was escorted off, presumably for some concussion protocol. We're not sure, but it certainly appeared that way. We were told it was questionable. Holly Saunders had checked that out for us. Again, look for a possible option pass. For her, now he reverses field, and the former quarterback, after all of that, maybe running 15 to 20, gets ahead for a two-yard game. Look who the guy was out there lead blocking for his former quarterback is number 11, Ellinger. <laughs> this guy is tough, man. Well, he's a dual threat. Yeah, watch him. Watch him after the the mesh. He's going to come back the opposite direction, and become a lead blocker on the other side. He's looking for somebody to hit. He led Westlake to. A state title, both as a junior and a senior. His uh, injury ended his senior season prematurely. Broke every school record that Drew Brees and Nick Foles had. That's tall company. And he airmails this one out of bounds, incomplete. Intended for a little Jordan Humphrey. He's down on the side over there, Tim. Slow to get up. Yeah. There, the, the greater story here is there is nowhere to go to the field. The coverage is so tight over there. That ball was high and away due to the pressure that was on Ellinger. Deshaun Johnson making that hit. Crowd responding negatively to seeing it on the big board. But no flag. Third down and eight. Hemphill back in the game. And he's in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Four for 13 on third down conversions tonight. Texas. Setting up a screen, it's not there, and he throws it away just at the feet of Daniel Young. There is no foul on the play for intentional grounding. There was an eligible receiver in the area. Fourth down. Well, when we were here a couple of years ago, we kept saying first one to 50. <laughs> Tonight it may be first one to 30, possibly 27. I think we've watched in the last three or four weeks the way that this Texas defense has been playing, particularly last week against West Virginia. They got some back in the lineup that helped them. This is looking like old fashioned football yeah. tonight. Look at that punt. He's the most deceptive player on the field. This one is from Texas Tech's perspective mercifully bouncing into the end zone 67 yards from Australia with love. Well if you're looking at this game you wouldn't have known that the kicking game on, were struggling for both these teams. <laughs> he wanted it in though. Oh man. boy. <laughs> Can listen to all of the Olivia Newton John songs he wants in Australia when he goes back. He's been incredible. <laughs> and he wanted that one too. He's getting greedy. But he is. I mean, the field position situation tonight is uh, maybe the most salient storyline in our game. Well, it's, it's one of the things you, you wouldn't have expected that the kicking game would be a weapon and a tool that could possibly decide the outcome of this game because both kicking games will struggle. Desmond Nisby, the junior transfer from California, is in the backfield now. He'll carry it. Get some fresh legs in there, and he bowls over a couple of horns. It's beyond the 25 to the 26, a gain of six. I still think the ground game is going to end up deciding this for Tech. At some point in time, against that three-man front, they're going to find a little niche. Second and four. Basher, who's been targeted a couple of times, made a miraculous catch early, dropped one a moment ago, is at the bottom of your screen. Carter's pass incomplete. Again, tight coverage from Boyd, knocking it away. Yeah, Chris Boyd is just all over the receivers on that end. And again, you throw into the, the wide side of the field. Carter tries to take his eyes late to the wide side, but the coverage is all over him. Again, if you're going to use your eyes to affect someone, do it against soft coverage or maybe a single safety look. But when a guy's playing press man, not even looking at your eyes. He is studying that receiver that's over him, and he's off him like a blanket. Now, Dylan Cantrell is going to see him in his sleep. Carter started 11 15. He's 5 of 20 cents. Third down. Comes a blitz. From the middle. In trouble. Throws it. Almost picked off. Boyd nearly had that one. It was intended for Quan Short, number one. And I'm not sure he knew 
where the throw was, and it was a back shoulder, and Boyd was the guy that had the well, best Well, the chance. pressure was coming late, and again, to the front side as well. That's what did it to him. Chris Nelson and company was coming after him, but again, it's that coverage by Chris Boyd, the corner, to the field. There's just no way to throw the ball. Nowhere to throw the ball. Everybody's covered up. And Malik Jefferson all over it, too. Hager over there to get some love. Oh, to Boyd. Here. Looks like we're going to run a little fun. Texas Tech takes its first time out of the half. Can't take a timeout. 30 seconds. Setting up with the old Emory and Henry play, it looked like. This <laughs> yeah. time out of the half. Something uh, Steve Spurrier used to run from time to time. Now Texas Tech has used two of its three timeouts in this half. And there you see the numbers comparison in this game. Stat comparison is sponsored by Farmers Insurance and uh, Longhorns have been spreading the wealth and Texas Tech, you know, when you think about it, some big plays have kept them in this game, Spencer, but they haven't had maybe the balance that they'd like. Well, balance is typically something you didn't necessarily look for. We've done games with Mike Leach, who obviously began this whole raid concept when he ran the ball three times for the game. All of a sudden, the penalty is swung back to balance being important. Equal and run, equal pass. Hanazolo will boot it away. That bell maps back. Oh, he, he lost wow. it. Texas Tech may be on it. We'll see. They say they've got it. They say they've got it. Nothing official yet. They're selling it. Yes, they are. They do. Mike DeFee says they've got it. And it's Keyshawn Allen, 21, that comes away with it. A 41-yard boot and a fumble. The second Texas turnover of this half. Well, you got to seat the ball properly. Goes right through the wicket between his legs. And Keyshawn Allen and the company all over it. I mean, you got eight bodies over there in white jerseys. You don't have a chance of getting that one back. Rule number one, field the ball properly. Hmm. Keyshawn Allen right in front of him. Had a little bit of help from Kyle Heffron, 48, to help shield him once the ball hit the deck. And Azolo knew where it was going. <laughs> and he, he was, was way the, at the other end. Oh, yeah, he was the, no <laughs> one was further away than him. <laughs> First and 10 for Tech. Ball at the Texas 32-yard line. Nisby breaking tackles. Good to have fresh legs in the second half, huh? Inside the 30 to the 27. John Bonney, 24, junior out of Houston, Texas, rotating in there to make the stop. Second and five. Plenty of time here for McLean Carter. Over the middle, wow. almost picked. Boy, you talk about the danger zone. Hager with the pressure. Well, and a near pick. It's the timing of when they're blitzing. They understand when they move the pocket with him as a southpaw, oh. they're going to push him going the opposite direction. you got to be careful about throwing across his body. That's really been the theme tonight. Near misses, tip balls, missed opportunities for interceptions, batted balls away at the last minute. These hair trigger calls could be the bane of the destruction if they continue to flirt with disaster. Third down and five. Nisby and Felton, the setbacks. McLean Carter wrapped up behind the line. And that's Gary Johnson again. No substitute for speed and outside linebacker. He's big, he's fast, and he arrives in a bad humor. Well, speed and quickness is always more important than size and strength. And you just saw it demonstrated there in the short side of the field with real estate running short. He shows you why it's so special in this system. Looks Everybody's like talking about Malik Jefferson possibly leaving. They've got somebody to step up in his spot immediately right now. And he's one of their guys. Well, this is going to be quite a kick if Clayton Hatfield can put it through. From the 37, it'll be a 47-yard try. He hooked it. He hooked it. Plenty of leg, but he hooked it. That's got to be deflating for Cliff Kingsbury. You got a great opportunity after a muffed punt and a recovery, 
and you go backwards again. That's two turnovers now, Spencer, yep. where Texas Tech's offense has gone the other way. Potentially a maximum of 14 points. Again, we knew coming in that scoring touchdowns in the red area were problematic for them, but they are not even getting to the red area, so they can't use that as an excuse. They just can't get the ball in, and it's it's so frustrating an offense that you've seen well, score half a hundred or more. Yeah, Todd Orlando's got to be as, as pleased as David Gibbs is. Orlando's even more pleased right now. The Horns defense has been incredible tonight. Young in the backfield. We'll see how much longer Texas Tech's defense can play with the vim and vigor that's kept them in this game to this point. David Gibbs has been asking a lot of a team playing with a short field and enduring more snaps really than Texas tonight. Horns still leading by seven, second down and eight. Well, there's no reason to expect that they won't stay high energy and high level. They've done it all year long. This is the character of the stop. Wide receiver screen to Burke. Ahead to about the 32-yard line before being shoved out of bounds. Jordan Brooks and Dakota Allen, numbers one and 40 respectively, have kept the width of this game, and kept everyone in front of them throughout the majority of this game. Those two guys right there. That's what the defense calls for. It allows Brooks and of course Allen to be a rover of sorts, to move around to where the ball is and not have any defensive obligations. Third down and six. Monty Foreman's in the game. He has the touchdown catch, and here he is. Here he is, and it's a first down at the 48 of Texas Tech. Now Marty Foreman's that extra H back, and they found him underneath a little soft spot in the middle of the coverage. Everybody's locked up in man, and so a nice job of Ellinger moving to his right, finding soft spots back to his left underneath coverage. 19. Catches 46 yards and one touchdown for Foreman. Now looking on Colin Jackson. Incomplete. That one hung up a little bit on Ellinger and allowed for DeMarcus Fields to play catch up. Well, Fields was beaten on that play. And again, if the ball hadn't been out in front of him, it would have been an opportunity. And that arm is, that left arm is there. It's almost simultaneous. You see it in slow motion. It kind of looks like it's possible interference but the bottom line is he was beaten on that if that ball is out in front a little bit more air underneath these easy, easy six you're right second down and ten you know Foreman doesn't get targeted that often Spencer but with the incredible numbers that they have at wide receiver when he comes in you almost think they're going his way here's Hurd on the jet sweep pitch actually a little shovel pass technically that will catch that will uh, be aerial yardage for the quarterback Ellinger as Dakota Allen makes the stop. It's a gain of seven, third and three. One of the things they're doing right now is they're, they're really painting the field and it's making it tough. Despite the fact that we know the speed and quickness of Texas Tech is there, it really gets mentally draining on you to cover left, right, middle of the field. It's tough. Third and three. Press man coverage. Corner. He's wrapped up. Stoned at the line of scrimmage by Brooks again. Dakota Allen also gets in on the pile. And we got a lot of four down territory, one would think, the rest of the way. Yep. However, you'd think that uh, the way Herman's been utilizing his punter tonight to get Texas Tech pinned, that they might contemplate punting here. It's only two, so Tom, it appears, will allow his guys to go for it. That's a gutsy fourth call. and a long one. That's a gutsy call right here. 13 of 29 this year on fourth down. You see the line to make. It's Ellinger. It would appear to be a first down. I think he made it. By the scantest of margins, but it's a good right foot spot and a first down. Gutsy call, but the right call. Again, the numbers game with the formation works in your advantage. You don't forget about the mesh point. You got a lead blocker in there, and Ellinger goes in there with his 230 pounds and gets that first down for you. You know, Spencer, we still got a lot of time left in this game as we trickle down to the closing seconds of the third. Never thought I'd say this, but a two-score game might, might be insurmountable tonight against this Texas defense if they can score on this drive. Ellinger flushed from the pocket. Let's it fly. Beats four minutes incomplete. 
led him just a bit too far. It was Jashawn Johnson, number seven, the safety that got isolated with him. Six seconds left in the period. That ball was a little bit low and out in front of Foreman on that one. Again, it's tough to be accurate on the run, but this is one of the things that he does well. That ball was just beyond the reach of Foreman as he goes out of bounds. Second down and ten. Porter remains in the game as the setback. <laughs> This should be the final play of the quarter. Swing it out to Armani again. And he's pulled out of bounds at the 40, at the 36 yard line by Justice Parker. And that's the end of the third. Longhorns lead it 20 to 13. Fox College football will return after these messages. It's the Horns and the Red Raiders. The perfect way to whet your appetite for an incredible Saturday on Fox tomorrow. Texas Tech did get three on their opening series after a great catch by T.J. Vasher set them up. They're up and then they're down, and then they're up and then they're down here in Austin tonight as we get going in the fourth quarter. David Gibbs is once again asking his defense to stand firm on a critical third down play here. The Horns look to get a two-score advantage as we open play here in the fourth. Kyle Porter remains the setback. Out of the shotgun. And we've got a marker down. That might make it a bit more difficult for Texas. Really enjoyed our conversation with Tom Herman yesterday. Very candid guy. Ball start. Offense. Number 68, five-yard penalty, third down. And that's Derek Kerstetter. You'll notice him flinching right there, right tackle. There it is. Yes, it was slight, you know, but those guys on the outside are the ones that get busted quickly. As you can see them, you've got a clear line of sight if you're the line judge. Third down and 13. Ellinger looping it deep. It's incomplete for Johnson. And the marker does fly. Desmond Smith down there, number four. He's very upset about it. Well, there's no face guarding at the collegiate level, but he, he's still, I think there's contact before. He turns his back Pass and obviously fair. loses. Yeah. He's got his Defense. body all over the receiver there. Didn't have to. It's a great call. Yeah, it is. Spot. Great call. And he didn't have to. Spencer, he was there. No, he was in great position. He just didn't trust himself. Yeah, that's just a, what you call it, a lack of technique. Yep, absolutely. Right. You're, you're placed out there for a reason. If you're manned up against someone, you better have the ball skills enough to make quality decisions like that. He just choked. From no the, need to make contact. From the 26-yard line, that ball is batted down. Excellent defensive play there by Tony Jones, number nine. Youngster from Castleberry, Florida, junior college transfer. Yeah, he plays on that rush side at the end, and, and again, he plays at that outside position and got that paw up there to affect him because they're, they're trying to take advantage of that corner spot over there. Jones is long, and he's got great athleticism off the edge. He and Colin Hill sharing time at that rush end. Second and 10. Porter. Boy, Ooh, Brooks hit him or what? Well, he came down outside. and was that yeah, hit. He, he got a little help too yeah. he, he wasn't alone in tagging him Vonte Dorsey also came up yeah that was a heavy hit yeah big hit they need to take him out of the game right now because again yeah. double the pleasure there looked like a shoulder hit but there may have been head head contact unintentionally however but that tapped him right on the side of the helmet boy. Uh, yeah it's he, a shoulder hit and he puts that hand to the head to let you know he he got touched a little bit Legal contact. Yep. He's a runner, and it was not with the crown. He got him on the shoulder. But, yeah, to your point, it affected him. He's clearly a little dazed. And they'll take him to the sidelines for a little protocol. Third and seven coming up. Yeah, when you get in like that, you're looking out the side of that ear hole, man. You know you felt it. Third down seven. 
Lorenzo Joe has gone down to the bottom of your screen. Number 14. Got Burt there behind him as you see Hemphill maps in motion. Going deep for the corner. That pass is just on the edge and out of bounds is Colin Johnson. It was close, but he could not reel it in. Just ran out of real estate there with Fields in coverage. Press coverage again. Fields does a nice job of redirecting him. That ball is up high, but Fields for the second time in about five plays, he's actually beaten on this ball. The release is up on the shoulders, just out of bounds, unfortunately. So Joshua Rowland will try from 40 yards. And again, remember Mitchell Becker had been kicking. Roland, by midweek, had reassumed the position. And out of the hole. Ooh. That one will just sneak in the right upright. These kickers are tired of being criticized. They're coming up big tonight. Aerial coverage is being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. I beg your pardon, Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm. Here to help life go right, American Express founding partner of Small Business Saturday. Shop small this Saturday by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Now we can take a look at the aerial coverage. And yes, it is handled by State Farm. <laughs> it makes life go right and my life just got a little better now that we've <laughs> taken care of that obligation a beautiful shot of the capital of austin that friend of mine back in the old old days said if we hadn't run out of bullets in the south the nation's capital would be in austin <laughs> joshua Rowland will kick it away texas able to convert after texas tech missed the field goal try off of fumbled punt and that kick to qt will not be returnable and this is really the story of the third quarter was missed opportunities for Texas Tech after turnovers. Well, the turnovers were part of it. It was just opportunistic opportunity for Texas Tech, but they weren't able to convert that. 14 points could have been scored off of turnovers, but they came up empty-handed. So again, as you can see, the numbers tell the story. Yep. First in 11 games, 17 points off turnovers. That's ninth fewest in the FBS. They went, by the way, three and out, but minus nine yards total in those two sequences and now Nick Shimanek the youngster that's been starting all season a senior is now back in the game taking over for McLean Carter he'll have Nisby and Felton in the backfield and let's see if this young man that waited so long to become a starter after backing up Patrick Mahomes can get something done in the passing game there's Nisby ahead for a few yards and the transfer from Iowa in 2015 backed up Patrick Mahomes and Obviously, he was behind a stellar quarterback now in Kansas City, but he's got some gifts of his own. Let's see if he can pull a rabbit out of his hat. Now, remember, Mahomes got injured, got banged up a lot, so Shimanek did get some playing time prior to this year. But his improvisational skills, not quite that of McLean Carter. So if you're looking to give pressure, now's the time for Texas. His Nisby is stoned as he tries to run wide, hard to do against this Texas defense. That's Gerald Wilbon, 94, making the stop. There are the numbers on Carter, who, when you think about it, had a very good start to the game. But Spencer, he was saddled with difficult field position much of the night. Because he was backed up into his own end zone, asked to make some difficult throws across the field, I think was more a function of play calling or not. But now they're in the situation where they've got one hand behind their back, a less than mobile quarterback. The ground game is going to Pull them out of this, Timmy. I'm convinced of that. Third down and nine. They got trips to the top of your screen. Texas now can pin their ears back. He steps up. Boy, a lot of green grass wow. there. And he does get the necessary yardage for the first down at the 39-yard line as Gary Jensen tattoos him there. Now, see, the reason why that yardage is there because they're not respecting his ability to run the ball. They're coverage behind it and there will be some opportunities for him to run he just won't have those explosive plays he'll get the underneath stuff though from the 38 first down again just a three-man rush with the fourth late looking long a wide nice. open receiver it's QT Got it. inside the 10 boy he air mailed that one 52 yards and just like that the Red Raiders are in the red zone 
Well, that's a tremendous throw and catch. And again, QT got it on the other end. Carter loved it. That's exactly what you're looking for. A guy who's there to support his the battery mate. The field is a completed pass that plays under further review. Eight receptions, 153 yards for QT. Well, unfortunately, tonight, the officials have perfected the art of sucking the joy out of a moment. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, this is this is a great effort here, and I think it's a catch. Yeah. I, I, again, does the ball move a little? Yeah, it does. But ball's got to hit the ground. Let's see if uh, he completed the nose of it. Looks like it's exposed yeah. there, but I think he got that right hand underneath it. The arm. I think he cradled it. Uh, I don't know how like you turn. I don't know how you overturn yeah. that. I really don't. But we have the technology. A little bit like. Um, a visit to the doctor instead of getting an x-ray they, they give you something better than that and we now have the technology and that stops play from time to time dean blandino has been very active with us tonight in keeping with our season dean what do you see well it's a big play and they're taking an extra look they've been somewhat sensitive with some of these replays today but the key is the nose of the ball does it touch the ground and is there a loss of control? Remember, there can be some slight movement, and I just don't see enough to change the call on the field. You can see the receiver go to the ground. Maybe the nose touches, touches the ground right there, but it's difficult to see if it actually comes loose after that. I mean, the left to me, arm, it looks like the call on the field has to stand. Yeah, I mean, the left arm is never anywhere but underneath the ball, even if the nose is pointing in a downward flight. After review, the William Field stands first down. So your record remains perfect. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> Dino's good, isn't he? Well, without he and Mike Pereira, where would we be? Two of the greatest hires in sports television. No question. Box uh, always known for its innovations. From a technical perspective, the greatest innovations in our sport in the last few years. So Sheminick now one of one for 52 yards. Felton is the setback. Sheminick in for McLean Carter on this drive. Cutie now makes his move into the backfield and goes in motion. But just nothing there. Look at that left side. Texas's front seven has just been outstanding. That's Chris Nelson who's had tremendous penetration into the tech backfield all night long. Tim, you, when you sacrifice runs like that and you have a quarterback that is the type of guy that's a passer, as evidenced by the completion of Cutie, you'll take a play like that just so you know the defense is going to rally. You can influence him with play selection. Technically now second and goal, even with the lost yardage. They're keeping in two for Max Protect. Jiminek for the corner. It is caught. It is Basher. It is touchdown. There's a flag late. Boy, that was pinpoint accuracy by Sheminick, though, wasn't it? Absolutely, and that's exactly what I was talking about. A nice soft cushion here. The, despite the fact that you got crushed on the last play, you can force man because all of those bodies are expecting run down in this situation, Timmy. Here it is from the shotgun. The ball is out. Back the shoulder. The field is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number nine. That penalty be enforced on the kickoff. That's number nine's first unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, uh, he gave the horns down signal, and uh, you're going to get tagged for that. Basher, by the way, his fifth touchdown reception, and that's a 29-yard strike but Sheminick really his 29th touchdown pass of this season he has had some interceptions to go along with it but 29 touchdowns to only eight picks for the young man that was replaced tonight what a story that could be for a senior in his final game albeit the guy on the road Basher didn't need Velcro eh, but he didn't need the act afterwards either did he we'll be back D.J. Vassar coming up with that touchdown catch and has the biggest catch in the third quarter as well, that 40-yarder. This one from Sheminek. The pitching change certainly worked out yep. for Cliff Kingsbury. But here's the problem. After the dramatics in the end zone, Vassar penalizes his team. Now they have to kick off 
from their 20. In all likelihood, you're surrendering, what, 20, 25, 30 yards on average of field position here. But I still like the defense of Texas Tech and their ability to prevent Texas from marching the length of the field to score on them. I, I, they've been that impressive to me tonight. Kyle Porter is back, number 21. He's at around the 15-yard line as Barton prepares to boot it away. Goes with a squib variety. Wow. And he's going to have a little bit of difficulty and takes a knee to 23. Wow. What a mistake. Wow. That is a huge error in judgment by Porter. I think she was scary. I mean, that just uh, <laughs> makes no sense to go to a knee. I mean, he still had plenty of room, Spencer. No, you got some running back in you, man. You're supposed to be salivating an opportunity to pick that ball up and run with it. That's amazing. Well, that, wow. I'm thinking they're going to get the ball, and I'm sure Texas Tech was too, around the 35 or 40, and yet they're at the 23-yard line. Not where you'd be if you had gotten a touchback. That's uh, amazing. Mm. Daniel Young is the setback. Now let's see what Ellinger can do. This freshman from right here in Austin who's been so stout in his early performances, short of injury, hands off to Daniel Young, another freshman who stopped at the 20. Corralled by Broderick Washington, 96, the first to make contact. Well, Broderick Ro Washington is an absolute load, man. He he comes hell-bent for election. Number 96 out of Longview, Texas, working on that end, that defensive tackle position. He plays with such integrity to be able to set that edge, not let anybody outside of him, but get nasty when he needs to get inside. Second and The 30 has a first down right, all the way out to back. the 37, but we've got a marker down. Back at the, well, behind the line of scrimmage, actually. Flag resting at the 20. Holding. Offense. Yep. Number 55. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. That's their best offensive lineman. They just got back last week. Connor Williams, watch at the top of your screen. Well, you see Connor there. He's holding on the outside. He was so dominant last week against West Virginia. Made a huge difference, but got caught for holding on that play right there. It's going to take him back. A moonwalk back. Yeah, he had that problem after the USC game. Meniscus tear, MCL, PCL sprain, all of that after... Week three's game with USC. There's just five penalties for 37 yards, but that one was costly. Second and 18. Ellinger, he's going to take this one himself. Got a lot of that back, didn't he? he? Sure All the did. way to the 30 yard wow. line. Four yards shy of a first down. Colin Hill making the tackle number 13. Well, they cleared it out for him. He just ran right up the middle. And again, you can see that convoy, Allen. Usually able to make those type of open field tackles, but when you got a 200 pound guy, Zach Shacker for the center in your nose, it's kind of tough to get around that to make a play. Cooney also with a good block, 51. When you see the third down conversion story, mirror images really. Yep. Porter remains the setback. They go with trips, a little teacup look we'll up see, at the top. Yeah, I'll we'll see what they do with that bunch formation, see who comes open. Ellinger under pressure off the edge, dumps it to Porter. Wow, he's shy of the first down. Dakota. Hit hard by Dakota Allen. Mm -hmm. He has been all over the place. Dakota Allen at that wheel linebacker position from Humble, Texas. Nothing humble about that one. He's coming with a lot of confidence. Put it in your watch pocket. Watch number 40 come up, Timmy. Boom. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> and listen to this. Michael Dixon, he needs a boomer. He's had plenty of them tonight. Cameron Batson back deep. Look at this punt. High, end over end, and a fair catch called at the 20 by Cameron Batson. Just a 49-yard boot. Just a typical sort of ho-hum boot by the Australian. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Texas Tech's got it back. Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you. 15% more on car insurance. Let's take a look now at the road ahead sponsored by Coors Light. The climb ahead and the celebrations to follow. Climb on. It's the Big 12 championship game. 
Spencer Sooners taking on the Horned Frogs of TCU in a rematch from a game previously won by Oklahoma 38 to 20. It'll be coming your way December 2nd exclusively on Fox. You don't want to miss it. Hemphill Maps reels that one in. He gets it up to the 40-yard line. Jay Sean Johnson, the right safety again. I, I just love how the Texas Tech defense flies around. We've got one Red Raider down on the ground now, but I mean, as a whole, this group has been so active and played with great leverage and integrity. It's uh, Douglas Coleman the third. Youngster out of Zachary, Louisiana, sophomore that's uh, down on the turf. Let's get a quick game break from Los Angeles and Greg Wolf. Tim, thanks over on FS1, winner of Cal UCLA, earns bowl eligibility. Josh Rosen, perfect pass on the money to Jordan Lasley. 17-yard touchdown, Rosen 11-15, 168 yards and two touchdowns in what could be his Rose Bowl finale. UCLA leads Cal 17-6, second quarter. Tim, Spencer, back to you. A lot of talk, Greg and, and Spencer, about uh, Chip Kelly as being the potential candidate to take over for Jim Mora, who was let go last week. Told he'd made a trip out and had a little walkabout and conversation, and we'll see if that plays out. There was a lot of conversation just prior to the start of tonight's game, as you see Coleman the third making his way to the bench under most of his own power, mm -hmm. that uh, he had, in, in effect, turned down the Florida opportunity, unsubstantiated, but that was the story. Kelly. Let's see if he gets just chop blocked here again. He's Oop, yep. gets that inside leg and right around the ankle. Yep, trying to make a play. As you said, he walked out on his own ability there. That's a good thing. Second down and five coming up for the Horns who are looking to see this clock tick and the extension of their lead, perhaps. This one is still very much in doubt. 23 to 20. Horns are already bowl eligible. They want to get to seven and five. Texas Tech must win to be guaranteed a bowl opportunity at six and six. And Ellinger. George is ahead just shy of the first down. A little longer than a yard away as Jordan Brooks wraps him up at the 44-yard line. Yeah, they want to get that winning season for the first time in almost four seasons. That's the first order of business, and to do that, they've got to beat Texas Tech. Going quickly now, option to the wide side they of the got field. It. They strung him out. Great defensive play, oh, undercut. Oh, Octavius Morgan, not only did they make the play, he loses yardage. Back to the 41, so it's four yards away from a first down. David Gibbs has his safeties and his linebackers playing so close to the line of scrimmage. That's how they're able to, with their speed, play on the opposite side. I don't care how much Ellen Gear's leadership is, he cannot outrun those skill position players. And Brooks and company, along with Allen, boy, they make it for him to stretch the field. Spencer, this was a team that even two years ago, after they beat Texas, got blown out in the bowl game they against LSU. They were, they were the laughing stock of FBS from a defensive standpoint, their improvement is incredible as Batson takes the fair catch at the 11-yard line. They couldn't tackle anybody. No, you're right. And by the way, speaking of something that's taken the world by storm, how about Holly Saunders' Wanderers Final Edition? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tim, and it's a good one. Last year, to our crew's Thanksgiving dinner. With over 35 traveling production and technical folks, we in the sun, rain, and snow. And a special thanks goes out to Steve Grant, who shot and edited all these Saunders Wanders and put up with me while we couldn't be at home with our families this Thanksgiving. We're all very fortunate to call this crew our road family, even Jake Jolivet. You mentioned earlier our producer there. We had some fun. So to all of you, a final time, I say dilly dilly as I send it back to the pit of misery. Tim? Yes, indeed. It is the pit of misery. So says Jake Jolivet, our fearless leader. Big drive for Texas Tech as that pass, a little bit of a run pass option. Look at Cutie has it for a first down. Tim, there's a melee that will come over defense in situations like this when you're able to go fast. Remember, this is still Texas Tech. Play fake. Sheminick with time. And he's going to get rid of it. He was outside the tackle box. Let it fly as he was being wrapped up behind the line. And a little sportsmanship shown there by Malcolm Roach, 32. Yeah, he's just got to make smarter decisions that, yeah, he was outside that tackle box. But, you know, look, nobody's around him. But once that guy comes bearing down on you, don't even fool with that. that yep. you got to get rid of that ball long before it even gets to that point. That's it. just flirting with the disaster. Now, wait a minute. We're having a long conversation here. 
about whether this should be a loss of down and a flag, and they're going to throw it. This is huge. Intentional grounding, offense, number 16. The quarterback was outside the pocket. But However, the ball did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Of scrimmage. Yep. Yep. Lost it down to spot of the foul. Second down. Now he lost his poise there. That is a good call. That's just not You've got to get it to the line of scrimmage, even if you're outside the tackle box. He did not. you got to have your head in the game, and that's, that's inexcusable. Especially for senior. See where the line of scrimmage is. Well, the line of scrimmage is here right by the numbers, and that's where he's got to. Remember where the ball goes out, though. Where does it go out? See? It's not. It's behind yeah. the line. That's a good call. Second down, 17 after the loss. We're still having a consultation here. Might we have an over? Might, might they change it? <laughs> See where the ball actually goes out. See where the ball goes out. See, I think that's behind. Yeah, it's behind the stick. After further discussion. The ball actually did get past the line of scrimmage <laughs> extended. Well, it's an that. incomplete pass. Second down at the I, previous I, I spot. Think, I think there may have been a little too much discussion. Well, that was a little early Christmas gift there, man. That's is it ever? The ball is clearly thrown behind the stick. It's it's thrown behind it. But watch where the stick is, okay? See? It's thrown behind it. That's the original line of well, okay. Great break here for Texas Tech. <laughs> Second and ten, a lot more manageable. See if they can parlay it into more. Felton, the setback. Trying to pop it. He gets up to the 30. That's a nice quick hit for four yards. Oh, it's an inside trap play. Boy, that, that one almost burst out of there. Now the largest fourth quarter deficit Texas Tech has come back from under Kingsbury is seven. The Raiders trail TCU 17 to 10 in the fourth in 2016. One at 27-24 in OT. So down 23-13 in this quarter tonight. Top five stop unit on third downs here. Big for Texas. Can they continue their trend? Trip formations to the field. Got a lot of options with this here. Shemenek under pressure from Johnson unloads almost picked off intended for cutie great convergence and Chris Boyd led the charge well, I know he's trying to throw at the sticks but he had a back on that same side of the field it was a check down option for him, and he could have thrown there to minimize the damage he just didn't see it and again maybe he thought he was being wise and trying to not come short of the first down but again you had a receiver right there. Well, yeah, you're Just right. Just check it down to him, man, and let him try to make a guy miss. Mm -hmm. Demarcus Felton, 27, right there. Felton is here. He leaks out. He gets caught in the trash. Not even supposed to be part of the equation, but he leaks out, and yeah. he's just standing there. Looks like we've got false start action, too. False start. Offense, number 15. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. That's a big miss when you think about it because he's – Three yards shy of the sticks for a first down as your safety valve. Cliff having a conversation with Sheminick. That's when you need a really an improvisationalist back there again because the back got caught in the wash. It was not even supposed to be in the route, but that's, you know, you got to draw him up in the stand sometimes. Panazolo needs a good boot here. He'll get it off around his 15. High and end over end and Hemphill Mass takes a fair catch at the 28. That's a 47 yard boot. And the Red Raiders defense will have to do the job yet again against this Texas offense that has been stymied much of the second half. And now a quick word from Duracell. Duracell is the number one trusted brand. Something else to consider with only 547 remaining, Spencer, that Early timeouts taken in the That's right. third quarter by Texas Tech leaves them with one between now and the end of this game. If there's anybody, though, that's built to play with fewer timeout, it's Texas Tech. But they, as you said, may need them. Young is the setback. Hellinger remains the quarterback. And he goes with a quick slant, and it's taken by Duvernay. He's got the first down out to the 43-yard line. That's the first time. I can recall tonight that they've seeded the slant route so easily. Part of that's because no pressure is coming on the quarterback on first down. You got to consider that a free down. Don't change things now. Still bring pressure to effect number 11. Ellinger now 21 of 40 on the night. 
again. More difficult to get yardage in the middle of that defensive front. Jordan Brooks again makes contact with Daniel Young, who's everything that Tom Herman told us he would be as a running back tonight. I've gone to him early and often in Tim Beck's offense. Well, he's stout too. You know, he's about 210 pounds, six foot. He runs with great leverage. Type of back you need to close a game out. Second and six with Hurd again on that quick pitch sweep. Wow. And it stopped for really nothing. Absolutely stoned by Ja'Shawn Johnson, number seven. You know, this young man needed a big game. He had not, he'd been taking chances in recent outings, but tonight he's been pretty solid. Number seven. Along with Vontae Dorsey, the left safety, who came all the way from that safety position to be four yards deep into the backfield before they were able to make it to the line of scrimmage. David Gibbs has got a very active group he should be proud of tonight. They acquitted themselves well. Yeah, I don't think you make a coach change just on the basis no. of how good oh. this defense is. He can help around. you win in a league that's typically going to score a lot of points. Third down and six. Ellinger masking nice off. It is great coverage, but let's see the legs of this young guy. He's got a first down for Texas. And he gets up showing the sign. Love the swagger in this young guy. He's got it, doesn't he? It, it, you almost feel like this is almost a design run. It's just a four-man rush up front. He releases, feels where the bodies aren't, pulls it down, and gets up field vertical and slides to protect himself and advance. First down. Nice. <laughs> He's the leader, man. Yeah, ranked as the number four dual threat quarterback in the country coming out of Westlake. <laughs> Nine carries, 30 yards tonight. None bigger than the yards he accumulated right there. On first down. Tick, tick, tick goes the clock. And Kyle Porter forges ahead to the 41 of Texas Tech. We're talking to Tim Beck, Texas's offensive coordinator, and he was talking about the young quarterback. And thinks he's under control, throwing interception things. And I got it, coach. That's always his response. <laughs> I got it, coach. Well, he can say I got it, coach, on that last one because he was all over that one. Pulled it down, got the first what down. Did he say last week in West Virginia he had four I got it, coaches. <laughs> the over under was to, supposed to be less than that tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got you, coach. Trips to the top of your screen. It's second and six. I got to get that safety over there, otherwise they're going to be short-handed. Young shifts to the. Boundary side. They, they got him now. Yep, and they go to that side, and it's Foreman. And Amante is going to be shy of the first down. Nice adjustment there. Yep. Jordan Brooks, he's so quick, making the adjustment. Number one, shoving him out. Well, Brooks got over there, and he needed to because, again, the third safety was actually on the hash mark, which meant they were down a man. It was three on two. And just like uh, any matchup, you don't want that. The problem here for Texas Tech, they can't stop this clock. Nope. They're trying to hold on to it. If they can get the ball back, and they have, uh, boy, would they love to have those that they had to take in the third quarter over. Third down, a long two here. Young the setback. Look how close they are to the line of scrimmage. This is pressure here all the way. Now this could be your ball game out right here. One more first down. Over the middle, it's intercepted. is this Texas Tech team when they lead in the turnover category. Plus two, trying to make it 5-0. and oh. Ill-advised pass across your body, pulls it down and heads the other direction. Tim, I told you, I like the chances. Yeah. Justice Parker with the big play. Here's a look at Justice Parker. Here, comes underneath that ball and settles it. Now you got these big heavies trying to chase after him. Yeah, he, he's, he's getting a little winded, but he finally got down there and put him in range. Let's Ellinger, see if they can pay it off. Ellinger got locked in on Armani Foreman and 31 jumped it. What a marvelous defensive play. Third Texas turnover this half. Shimon now with the ball at the 14. Plenty of time now and one timeout left. So this is what you don't want. Soft corners here against this group. That's this is like stealing. Get that ball out quick. Shimon it. Stopped. Puna Ford 95 wrapped him up. So a loss there. Back to the 16-yard line, though, Market. Remember though, 
Remember, though, that he's going to take a shot to the head right here. Luna Ford wrapped him up. Right there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Texas takes his first time out of the half. That's Roach. 30-second timeout. Please set the game clock to 1-5-3. I don't know, Spencer. That was directly to the head. Malcolm Roach touched him up pretty good there. He Baton did. Rouge and, boy, he nailed him. I'm surprised they didn't call that. They can, they can definitely look at that now. Whether they are is another story, but they can certainly look at it. They have the timeout with which to work. Look at this again now. Puna Ford's got him wrapped he's up. Come in from that angle right this there. is Roach. I mean, his head is down, and yep. he, he hits him with the side and crown of the helmet. Wow. They can call down on that now. <laughs> Dean Blandino back in Los Angeles tells us, in his estimation, that is targeting. But it doesn't appear that there's a call down from our replay official on it. So we play on with second and 12. Content to play with these soft corners here. This is where this offense actually thrives. The only thing has disrupted it is that three cloud that we talked about when these guys are playing press. That's not the case here. DeMarcus Felton is the setback now. Yeah, they're they looking at called that down. Yep. Well, that oh, would have been a wow. glaring omission if they hadn't. I think Cliff may have called that. Texas Tech. Texas third wow. and final timeout. Mm. Six seconds. Well, my guess is he took that timeout, so they'll take a look at it and call down. Otherwise, why use it there? We'll be back. Cliff Kingsbury's Red Raiders, and Cliff in particular is a coach or player, with an opportunity for his first double-digit comeback in the fourth quarter. He did it once as a player at Texas A&M in 2002. They trailed 35-17 in the fourth, but Kingsbury came back and won it 48-47 in overtime. Now with Sheminick, who had been benched for this game in favor of McLean Carter, comes in the game late third quarter after they had really hit roadblock offensively, trying to get anything accomplished. And what a pitching change it was by the veteran coach. And I say that because he's been in the business for a long time, even at the young age of 38. It all started with the interception, Spencer. Well, interceptions is it. But prior to that, two opportunities prior, they missed an opportunity to score four. But again, Parker here on the return. Sheminick goes up top, helped out by Sean Elliott, strong safety, who fell down. And, of course, Basson put it in there for him and settled it. Parker, <laughs> pretty pumped up. <laughs> Justice says... There is some justice here, and Sheminick stride for stride. He looks a little bit like Kingsbury did after he called that Ruski play here two years ago. Hit them folks, young man. So what can Texas do with this time and a couple of timeouts remaining? Ellinger with a chance to write his history as a young career begins to buzz as a freshman. That's Lorenzo Joe over the middle on a quick. Clock continues to tick. The Dakota Allen in space there. Another fine tackle in space. CD, the underneath stuff. Kyle Porter, the setback. Haven't been able to find Colin Johnson long yet. Here's Ellinger pulling it down again. Looking to get out of bounds. I think he's going to be shy of the first down by about a yard. Tony Jones running him out. Yeah, Tony, Less than a yard away from the first down. Tony Jones is spying Ellinger, and his job to keep him underneath is just a three-man rush, dropping eight on the backside with the spy in Jones. His responsibility is number 11. Upset weekend in college football when you have rivalries. Saw a big one earlier today with unbeaten Miami going down. Texas, a 10-point favorite tonight. Now trying to finish it off with some highlights, and there's one right to Foreman. He had the early touchdown. It's a first down at the 40 of Texas Tech. 26 yards. Great job of moving downfield. When it's just a three-man rush, the protection is there. Plenty of time to deliver a strike. He may not be the most accurate of the two options you have, but when it's wide open like that underneath, my grandmother could complete that one. From the 40 of the Red Raiders, Ellinger with all kinds of time goes to the safety valve quarter. And he's wrapped up in space by Tony Jones. Tony Jones is unbelievable in space in terms of his ability to tackle. That's a loss of two. Texas takes his second time out of the half. 30 seconds. 
Only one remaining, and they did a nice job, Spencer, of keeping him in bounds. Well, that's a heads-up play by Jones. Again, watch him. He squares up. He heads his head on the inside, but he's, you can see that right arm. He's trying to pull him to keep him in bounds. That's a sign of a, of a player that's engaged, understands the context of the game. Wants to keep that clock ticking and preserve the possibility of a win. Forced him to use one, and that means there's only one left for the Longhorns to work with. Colin Johnson had two big touchdowns last year in Lubbock. Number nine, they have not been able to get him on track. Armani Ford is actually, in terms of what he's done per catch, been the most effective receiver, number three, in the slot. Second down and 12 coming up. Colin is up at the top of your screen. David Gibbs defense holds based on how they perform tonight. Gonna get interesting. Plenty of time again for Ellinger. Flags down. That pass is picked okay. off at the 20-yard line. Wow. And it is number 25, Douglas Coleman the third. Now, depending upon what that is, and it's thrown in an area where it could be holding. Yeah, I think it's going to be holding. holding then that, that will be a big interception and an opportunity for Texas Tech to salt it away. Wow. Holding offense, number 55, penalties declined. Goes over the plays and interception, first down. How ironic is that, number 55, Connor Williams, the best player on there. And it just may very well be that Cliff saved his job as a result of a defensive play. How crazy is that? Yeah. David Gibbs' defense has been outstanding. Four turnovers this half, and as you cited, they're undefeated this season when he's won the turnover battle. 5-0. Oh. How about that? David Jones <laughs> takes it off. That man, he's only won in this stadium <laughs> twice, two times back-to-back. -back. Two years ago when Jakeem Grant had that big Ruski play to put it away in a, what was a helter-skelter first 1-50 to matchup. Wow. And now here with his defense being the calling card and a pitching change to Nick Shimonek, youngster that has come a long way for this opportunity, Spencer. Boy, he was so bold. And again, as we look at Coach Klingsbury, indeed, he could have been coaching for his job, but he let on in no such way. Yeah. Cool customer yep. in the build up to this one. Shimonek, by the way, he and his girlfriend <laughs> ran furniture restoration business in Lubbock called the Southern Pearl just before the 2016 season. It's a skill he learned from his mom, Teresa, who operated our own furniture restoration business in Millbrook, Texas. Well, guess what? He's just restored bowl eligibility that to was a, Texas Tech. That was a solid oak performance, that's for sure. <laughs> wow. Incredible victory. So much at stake. First time that Texas Tech has won back-to-back -back games in Austin. Tim, we have an old saying, pressure will make a pipe bust. That guy right there, true firm, hell, Cliff Kingsbury, under pressure, undaunted. Now he did turn in his air raid for situational football calls. We were a bit critical of some of the play calls in the second quarter. He stayed the but he did coach more situationally in the second half. And Holly Saunders is standing by with him right now. Holly? Yes, I'm with the, a newly wet uh, from Gatorade, Coach Kingsley, out down here. Now, made a quarterback switch late in the third quarter. You told me this is a possibility at halftime. Brian Shemanek, how much did that fire up the team? You know, Nick, uh, that was the hardest conversation I've ever made in coaching this week to tell Nick. Felt like we needed some quarterback run game, some mobility. But he came up to me and said, Coach, I'm ready. And that was all I needed to hear. We put him in, and I couldn't be prouder of him. He's had a great season, and to win like that, it's unbelievable for him. And with the, with the win tonight, you become bowl eligible. Yeah. How proud are you of your guys for battling back tonight? Yeah, these seniors, Go! that's what we wanted for them. It's been a tough year. It's ups and downs. Had some balls not bounce away, but they never quit. They fought for us. Enjoy it. Thank you. Tim, back to you. You know, I know Cliff's dad, and I know how much this means to him. And because he is... Uh, he, he is one of their own. Spencer, I really think that his job was probably safer than most thought, even before tonight. But after tonight, particularly with all of the other openings, I can't imagine that they would make a change. What with this defense of David Gibbs now just beginning to catch fire? Well, there's no question that he's Lubbock's favorite son, to be sure. But again, I was concerned that perhaps the few seniors that he has on this team were not aware of the magnitude.
too. You know this is a zero-sum proposition in major college football coaching. You have got to win. Ultimately, that's it. But again, they showed up, and the defense really led the way. We're going to put a bow on this incredible finish to our season on Fox in just a moment. Our final 27-23, back to wrap it up from Austin, Texas, right after this. A reminder, one of the great rivalries in all of sport, let alone college football. Number nine, Ohio State against Michigan, a 90-minute pregame. Rob Stone and company will get you going. Gus, Joel, and Jenny Tatt will have the game for you. Remember, there is a path for Ohio State. If enough dominoes fall and they win that game, then get Wisconsin potentially in a Big Ten championship game a week from Saturday, they could make it into the college football playoff. They do have a path. And now let's take a look at the progressive performance of tonight's game at Spencer. It was a remarkable performance, and turnovers had a lot to do with it in the second half. Basher and Kute really allowed them to step up and play. I was concerned because they weren't able to convert on the previous two turnovers, but again, in the end, it was Nick Shimonick. Nick, don't cut him. Shimonick <laughs> did a fantastic job. He used all of those snaps that he got behind Patrick Mahomes last year while he was injured. He looked like he was fit for the job. Yeah, 96 yards of passing for him with two touchdowns. And, and basically, too, the defense of Texas Tech was just, they were suffocating. And the play of those two outside linebackers, Brooks on one side, Dakota on the other, David told us about him through the week. They were absolutely as at Dakota Allen in particular, they put him in kind of a rover position where his responsibility was go after the quarterback if the coverage broke down. And he didn't have an assignment necessarily in run support. His job was to affect the quarterback, and he did in a tremendous way tonight. You know what, Ellinger, I think to a certain extent was he doesn't have a real go-to receiver. Right. That's the thing. We yeah. talk about distribution of the ball. There were ten different receivers mm -hmm. that were targeted in the first half. But Colin Johnson, who had two touchdown catches last year, that's a career high for him. As good as he is, that that would be a career high, tells you that this, t this Texas team has been fractured somewhat with all of the coaching changes. I think Tom Herman's on the right track, but this is still a, a, a club that is in transformation, and it's been going on really for a half a dozen years. If you were looking at Texas Tech and you said, hey, we've got 10 different guys that are averaging 100 yards or have had 100 mm -hmm. yards receiving, I'd be okay with that. But that's not the case with Texas. As you said, yeah. they do not have an out pitch there in the receiving department. Yeah. But again, this defense for David Webb and Texas Tech really what the story was to me. All right, David Gibbs, that, that defense was incredible. Let's go inside the locker room right now where the game ball was just given out by the head coach. Let's listen in. All right, no he didn't wait. wait. He said, Coach, I got you. I'll be ready. He came over to me before the fourth quarter and said, Coach, you're about to run out of time. All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 Let the old furniture builder take that game ball. Why not, huh? Look at those moves, Spencer. Hit them, hit them folks, guys. Hit them folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff right there, man. That's why you play the game, Spencer. That's, that's right. That's why you play the you gotta game. Got to hit them folks in there, man. <laughs> that's what it's about. <laughs> well, listen, my friend. 20 of the last 21 years we've been together, I never had enjoyed it any Pleasure's more than mine. this season. Thank you. And our many thanks to the men and women of Fox Sports who do such a marvelous job from Karina, who keeps us stable oh, yeah. here in the, in the booth, to our guys, our spotter. Uh, Brett Bender and our statistician Scott Alexander, job well done. That's just up here. Jake, uh, Jake Mitch. J Jesse West, who does such a remarkable job down on the sidelines with Holly Saunders. Our fearless leader, Jake Jolivet. He made the move from the NFL over to college football. I think he fits in real nice here in our college game. And Mitch <laughs> Riggin, our fine director, for all of them and all of the many technicians that do such a marvelous job. What a night. For those of us that love the game of college football, it matters not where teams are ranked. And yes, there's a golden end to every rainbow, but six and six means bowl eligibility and life in the postseason. Texas already had it. Texas Tech claimed theirs. Tune in to see Ohio State and Michigan tomorrow on Fox. Special pregame, 90 minutes coming your way for Spencer Tillman, Holly Saunders for the last time this year. Good night from Austin.